So I was like, okay, this is the moment where I have to be very, very courageous, very courageous, show who I am. If it's not now, then it's never. And it was always about a checklist. I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. I did every single thing in the checklist and I was still feeling the void. People confuse wealth and recognition with power. Mm -hmm. That's not power. Power is self-liberating. We are the government. We are society. Yes. We are the art world. As much as we created that, we're co-creating a new world. We don't need to go to the office. Mm. We realize we don't need that bullshit. We can still be human, showing up in our pajamas and talking about how vulnerable we feel. We actually can make a better society. This is just a reminder that we can't take life too seriously. It's like, why not? And I was like, wait a minute. Zip code 12111. You were in Williamsburg? I was in Williamsburg. I lived in Williamsburg. And now you're literally one of the first guests I've had. So that's crazy. This is Alberto, and you've made it to episode four of Noetic Nomads. Congratulations. My guest for today's episode is Monica Bravo. Now, Monica was the first total stranger I invited to Noetic Nomads. She introduced herself in the Rebel Wisdom Circle. For some reason, the universe told me, hey, ask her to come on the show. I did, and she was awesome and said yes. It was only later that I realized she's this big, amazing artist who's done exhibitions all over the world from New York to Seoul, Oslo, Madrid, Istanbul. And I'm like, wow, why would she accept an invitation from someone like me? And then I realized after a conversation, maybe why. She paid me one of my favorite compliments ever when she said, Albert, you can handle my crazy. And you will see what she means in this episode. Watching this, you would have never known that this was filmed at 7 a.m. in the morning. Yet somehow we both went for two and a half hours going over all kinds of topics, like how weaving led to the invention of the computer, how her artwork and even major life decisions come to her in her dreams, how synchronicity helped cure an illness and even led her to her Taoist teacher, and the story behind her drag queen alter ego, Pallas Athena. You can watch this and all Noetic Nomads episodes on YouTube or listen on podcasts. And be sure to check out the all new redesigned NoeticNomads.org and people the latest events, posts, and articles by the community. All right, see you soon. Starting. Okay, welcome lovely people to another brand new episode of Noetic Nomads. I'm Albert Kim, caretaker of this oasis of knowing. And with me today is someone who needs no introduction for those into the New York art scene. She's a visionary multidisciplinary artist who left her native Bogota, Colombia to study fashion design in Rome and Paris and photography in London before arriving in New York City where for 26 years, she challenged viewers' perceptions of what reality was in mediums ranging from still images to animation, sound, textiles, interactive installations, and even TikTok videos. As an artist in residence at the North Tower, she captured the last recorded moments of what it was like to live, work, and dream from the towers before the morning of September 11th in her seminal work dedicated to artist Michael Richards. Uno nunca muere la bispera. She's an artist, creator, photographer, designer, evolutionary astrologer, and someone who doesn't want to be right, only to be of service. Nomads, please help me in introducing the one, the only, Monica Bravo. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Albert. That was so much fun to listen to my life. <laughs> so yeah, I hope I did uh, any justice to you, Mark. I mean, you have a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to to investigate. Because um, I mean, I don't want to talk about other people, but sometimes when I give interviews, uh, some people have no clue of what I do. So it's it's a little bit complicated. But thank you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, definitely. I mean, like this is why I started Noetic Nomads. I want to dig deep. I want to. I, I want to see your gift and I want to show it to the audience, all your million beautiful facets. So this is definitely what I'm here for. Yeah, it's definitely. And um, so please, in your own words, could you let our amazing audience know how you cross paths with a wacko like me? <laughs> well, I would say that it's uh, part of uh, my path to allow the path to happen. Mm. Um, um, I was during the meditation this morning, I was thinking very much about how I got into Rebel Wisdom and it was uh, a lot of synchronicities happened, mm -hmm. you know, during the pandemic. Uh, I had, I was still living in New York City. I was in, in Brooklyn, actually, in Williamsburg. Um, and I was supposed to get a new roommate to come 
to live with me, but the lockdown started on, on March 14 and um, she couldn't get into the country. She was from Switzerland. And oh. so I thought like, oh, all right, I'm going to spend uh, whatever this takes uh, by myself. And I, I was a little bit like, oh, okay, whatever. But then I realized that it was going to be uh, great because I really like to be by myself to do a lot of my stuff. I'm an artist and I had already given up my studio a while ago. So one of the things, one of the projects that I started thinking about is how can I um, implement a lot of the practices that I've been doing for a long time in a way that is going to be uh, available to any sort of community. Um, so I had these dreams and one of them it says everything I need is in my body. So I started drafting this, oh, I, at the beginning was the idea of like, you know, remember those leaflets that before the internet, you know, you used to go to a place and you wanted to find out about something that will give you like a brochure, yeah, leaf, but it yeah. was more like a leaflet. It was a, it was a leaf of paper folded into four. So I designed one and I, I wanted to put in, in, in there like four ways where you can actually uh, become, you know, become the practice. It's not just sitting down mm. doing meditation. It's not just talking about how awful the world is or how great we are or, or how we can make this thing better. But how do you really embody the practice and actually make it happen within you and then, you know, find a place, a community, a sangha, you know, where you can connect to that. Mm. And I had in the last years uh, sort of like slowly, but also abruptly, like both, it was, it was a combination of things going slow that are in the progress of like leaving behind a lot of uh, identities that I no longer identify with, personas that I had created um, to protect myself so I could be part of society, especially the art world. Um, and then other circumstances that they were very abrupt where I just decided I no longer want to be part of this. And that's when I got in touch with like the idea of cancel culture and like why am I being so pushy against certain people or ideals or situations. So during that beginning of the pandemic, I started thinking, well, the best thing, you know, like, oh, I'm an ideal, idealist and optimist. So I was like, maybe we create a new society where, mm. you know, we can actually practice and so I started writing a lot about it but I fortunately I have a lot of work in my work so when I have ideas I have to really write them in my sketchbook and then they will become something else but I'm already entering into a field where I attract the situation or the situation is already around me and I'm feeling it so I was I, I had forgotten about the project not because it's not important for me because I've been very busy and so in the last week since I joined and you know I, I started the class with the sense making I'm like oh but this is what I wanted to do this is this 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 vision of putting people together but it was more connected less connected with the digital and more like let's go to a farm and create a space where we can teach each other the best and show not so much teach but like inter intervene with each other in a way that we are embodying our own experience and therefore we can reconnect as individuals and give the best and be of service that mm, was the vision yeah. so i said well some people know meditation some people know more about quantum physics uh i'm a nerd like <laughs> i love to study and think like i love psychology i love uh neuroscience i love art i love music so and when i when I like something so much, I just go all the way in. So I was thinking, okay, so I have the leaflet somewhere and, and you know, I'll send you um, a little thing so you can see, but it, yeah, was sure, very, yeah. it was a lot of fun because I wanted to make it like for all the ages. So somebody who's seven years old will open it up and go like, oh, that's meditation or oh, this. And so two days ago when Rebel Wisdom like unveiled the, 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 the new logo, I was like- Oh yeah, I saw it, yeah. I was like, oh my god this is synchronicity and i know what synchronicity is for a long time because i i'm like a nerd of, of carl young um, studies so mm. i actually made a piece years ago called synchronicity so i was like okay that means that means i'm in the right path this means that i'm in the right path so because everything is unfolding in a way that is just proving to me that i don't have to question where i am now and when you you know I, you respond or you reply to my introduction and you reply with such a um beautiful way like very open and very um embracing i immediately connect because mm. for me it's very important to connect emotionally that's that's my main thing like this is the way i feel like um 
I really can be in a place and understand that I can connect to another being and express something and listen what the other being is, you know, expressing in that moment. And then from there on, we can establish something else. So that's how we met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... No, that's exactly how I think. So don't worry about it. This is what I want. I want your unique gift brought to the world. Uh, so basically, uh, for people who like have a more linear mind, basically, we met at the Rebel Wisdom Circle community. And but that was like the uh, beautiful circuitous path that brought us there. And now you're talking about synchronicities. I was wondering, I was doing some research on you. And I was like, wait a minute. Studio of Endless Ideas zip code 12111 you were in williamsburg i was in williamsburg i lived in williamsburg up until that thing hit and then i i went to jersey so that's crazy that uh yeah williamsburg leave and now we're both at rebel wisdom and now you're literally one of the first uh guests i've had on the show so that's pretty amazing so you did you leave when like at the beginning of pandemic Oh yeah, like like late March, like March tw like March 26, like literally right when they're like, okay, all schools are shutting down, okay, everything shut. Literally right then, I was like, oh my god, what am I supposed to do? And April's around the corner, I gotta pay rent. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is you know, this is a time. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so um, so in uh, so in Rebel Wisdom in particular, now I know you told us about uh how you're always into like Jung and all these, you know, like you're really a, a nerd or geek, you know. So how in uh, in particular did you find Rebel Wisdom? I'm very curious about. I'll say it will find me like everything else. I don't. Okay, so since I'm very little, I'm a researcher. Mm. I when I when I have this part of the brain that is very, very abstract. So I can actually be in a place and I absorb information. Mm. And I used to be always a very little daydreamer. Like I will sit down. Now I know that that's like almost like a, a technique for manifestation is what I do since I was little. Like I will sit down and just close my eyes and I said, I want this and this and that. And then I will, I will believe I had magic in me. Still do. But you know, like when I was little, I was like, I have a wand, you know. Um, and, but at the same time, when I had like... I put attention to something i will become the expert at my level not at the level of the world but my level like okay i need to find this and i have to study it all the way all the way so i had been aware of it as in like i'm in a room and i know that rebel wisdom is there but i'm not paying attention to it i'm just listening go oh yeah those guys oh they're in they sound the english oh yeah they have this logo like you know i was not mm. really there then I've been studying and also I'm an evolutionary astrologer for a while now, for three years, but the person that I, I receive all the direct information is called Simon Foster. And he had done a retreat last year, in November. Mm. And I think it was a retreat that they held about masculinity. Um, and I knew when he came back from it, that something had opened up in him and it was beautiful to watch. And I remember writing something to him on his Facebook saying like, I can't wait to see all the goodies we're going to get and we're going to benefit from your encounter because he sounded like it was something really meaningful. And this is a, this is a person who actually, whatever he does, he does again, like all the way. So I was very inspired, but I was just like watching. So I, it was in the radar there. Um, I, I saw him open up more. We have, many sessions uh, individually and also as a group. We have a community as well. And I saw, oh, he's, he has also a YouTube channel. I saw him really emerging in a different way. And it was really beautiful to watch, but I was not just like watching him and seeing, okay, let's see if I'm gonna try that. No, it's just like, that's there. I'm just putting it together right now. Then pandemic happened. And of course, you know, we're all like trying to go to the real news that is YouTube to try to <laughs> Yeah. try to see about you know like yeah. uh what's the name of it um uh i you know when the fake news the other uh, conspiracy theories mm. so there was like the whole david ike thing and you know that yeah. thing exploded and so i remember that rebel wisdom did some sort of like something about it saying that we shouldn't really believe him and actually simon pointed like you know that's not oh so i said okay so i should really listen to these guys more and I started listening to them, but not all of it. Some stuff was really supercharged. And I immediately connected to Daniel's uh, wording, you know, and Charles mm. Eisenstein. I like, I love him for a long, love him, for yeah. a long time. Mm. So I was like, okay, if I have these two lines there, I could 
you know, there's something there. And I, it's been a long time, more than, I don't know, it's been, I don't know how many years, but it's been probably four or five, even six years where I listen to around eight hours of YouTube. Mm. I'm, this is my university right now. I, I pick very much, very well, and I really listen, and I learn. I, I don't have time to read right now that much because I'm, I'm doing visual stuff. So mm, yeah. So that's how I found, um, and I started listening more and more, and there were certain uh, areas where I would like, okay, okay. Then I opened the, the group that I have that I invite you. We are the architects of time. Yeah. And I started putting a lot of stuff, not because I wanted to like promote them, but I was like, these are the only people making sense to me right now. Mm. And with, but then I also saw that they're integrating, they're, they integrate pretty much a part of what I'm interested, not all of it, pretty much. Like I will say that there's 75% covering my interest. There's other 25% that is not there yet that I think yeah. that people like me, we can just, you know, bring into yeah. the mix. Exactly right. It's like it's like these inter like interlapping like 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 communities and like I'm like like for example like I found the reason I found Rebel Wisdom was because of Daniel Schmachtenberger, but it came from a it, it came from a biohacking because he has the uh, nutritional yeah. supplement company yeah uh, um, yeah Neurohacker Collective and I'm like oh Daniel Schmachtenberger I love what he's saying, and then pandemic hits I'm like okay I got a lot of extra time and then oh Rebel oh Daniel Schmachtenberger listen to what he's saying and yeah this is how I got here yeah yeah. But I had like in the last year, oh, because I do I do a lot of mentorships to younger people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had one student last year and they're one to one. I don't I don't do academic realm. I, I'm not against it, but I'm not for it. I think that it has cracked people's brain in a way that they, mm. you know, it had made uh, more robotic kind of thinking than really self-inquiry. And that I think that it shouldn't be either or it should be a combination. Um, uh, but that's my opinion. Hmm. Also, because I, I skipped all the academic uh, circles, although I I'm, I love studying, but I I don't think I will do very well in a situation where they tell me what to do. I will immediately from day one I will go like, but wait, um, I I think I'm gonna do it different. I always do it my way, so that yeah. I, I will be in a I will be a disruption. But um, <laughs> and I wouldn't be very happy about it. So and nobody would. So um, yeah, I started. I started really reading a lot and listening a lot to uh, neuroscience because I needed to uh, up my language. Because there was a moment, uh, and I've studied for a long time Eastern traditions. And I said a long time is a long time, you know, decades. Hmm. And, and, and we're gonna talk about that, but it was like last year where I said, or the last two years where I said, I have to synthesize. And I use that word a lot. I have to integrate, I have hmm. to synthesize because a lot of the information is already in my body. A lot of it is already been implemented in my work, but I really have to be, you know, day to day up to the level where people, whoever, I encounter and they challenge me because there's going to be this challenge where I can have the language to actually uh, communicate with them in a better way that is not applying the language of the past. That is what I call the manipulation, you know, the Judeo-Christian tradition where the narrative has been completely changed and we perceive time as linear because we don't. I mean, time is cyclical. It's more like related to the ancestral and, and you know, cultures that come from China, or from or from India, or from Japan. You know that they have been experiencing this this perception of time longer than we have here in the West. So I I was very concerned to see like there was one question once a student of mine, 18 years old. He said like, what's the difference between I think it was resonance, frequency, vibration, and energy. And I was like, gee, I really I know it, but I don't know it. So I had to go and start like, okay, I'm gonna go and study a little bit of neuroscience, but in a way at my level, I, you know, at my level. So it was like, who's going to put all these things together? And I started um, really reading and, and listening a lot to Joe Dispenza, which I think is really amazing. Yes, Joe Dispenza, yeah. Joe Dispenza is great because he has this methodology and I appreciate methodologies. I appreciate people who actually walk the walk and talk the talk and people who actually are creating methods for other people for the betterment of, of of the world and so uh, but i'm no person that likes cults nor religion yeah. and so i develop a way of like 
being able to get the info and the moment that they try to catch me like oh no we're a cult i just go I <laughs> exactly just step back yeah, yeah. I, no no i dissolve like what i do houdini i go uh, oh <laughs> but, but i manage to get all the info because i know how to pick up the information like that mm. so so that's like i started applying all that on a daily basis and changing and then i went back to my love for carl jung because i had for, since very little like read his books now I'm going to tell you the relationship to books comes from my relationship to my father that is absent in my life because he died when I was nine, mm. eight, nine. Um, and, and he was, I mean, he was somebody who really read a lot and he, he read, he read all philosophy and, and psych, he wanted to become a psychi psychiatrist, but he ended up going to law school. So his interest was always to, what are we doing here? Main question I had when I was four. What is all this about? So, so that yeah, I'm derailing. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love it. I mean, you touched on like 15 different topics I want to touch on. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out where should I go next. Uh, but yeah, so you you mentioned um, Joe Dispenza, and again, you were in Sense Making 101. I was in the previous Sense Make uh, 101 session, and it changed my life. The reason that Noetic Nomads exists is because of Sense Making 101. My first two guests were my two pod mates, uh, Thea and Robin. Um, and she was a big uh, proponent of Joe Dispenza, as am I. I love Joe Dispenza. And I looked at, uh, um, through your links, I saw, you know, Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, Nassim Har uh, Haramain, which thank you so much for reminding me. I just listened to like another like five podcasts with him because you reminded me. And uh, you, when you talk about how you you live, you, you, you are uh, consuming this content for eight hours a day, I was like, how you do that? And then you're like, oh yeah, because you had, you're, you're like listening to it while you're doing your visual medium, right? And um, I saw- When I sleep. Hmm? When I sleep. Really? Sleep. Okay. Sleep. I, I, so, okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. You got to go into that. So I was like, subliminal. Okay. So, um, and then I saw on your Instagram um, that um, you mentioned like that you were posed the question about how these teachings and uh, how do they make their way into your art? And how is your art influencing your sense making? So I was wondering, like, what were your current thoughts on how that's going on? Well, the interesting thing is, like, the language of even the word sense making is kind of new in my in, in my vocabulary, but it is not new into what it is in my life. Mm, yeah. It's just a new word, and and it's a great word because it really talks about the senses and about how we have to embody them and how. We are, if we don't like become aware of that we are in this vessel, you know, surrounded by time or becoming time, uh, and we don't understand that we have that power of, you know, not it's not about guiding the emotions or the senses, but like really looking at it, observing them. So they're going to tell us where to go and what to do. So that I've been doing for a long time because of my practices. I had. I had nine years with a Taoist teacher in New York, mm. wonderful man, Chinese. Uh, we did a cycle, nine years, and one day he, he, he called me, he says, oh, we're done. And I'm like, what do you mean we're done? Like, it was like a breakup. And he goes like, you're ready. I'm like, I'm not. He goes, yes, you are. And he goes, just trust that you are. You don't need me or anybody. Um, and I said, okay. And he just basically like pushed me out mm. in a very Taoist way. <laughs> <laughs> Because Dao is, is like, you know, it's hardcore. It's hardcore. Yeah. Uh, but he's a very uh, loving uh, man that has embodied a lot of uh, the yin principles, which is very beautiful. Because I think in the society we were, especially as a woman, I was I was over developing my young side mm -hmm. because I lost a father. My my grandmother was also a widow. All the women in my life have been very uh, young. Even me, I, I had overdeveloped my, my, my masculine more like, um, yeah, my creativity was not coming from a very, it was coming from my yin side, feminine side, but it, the way I was developing and, and acting was more like superimposing and, and being, you know, like, oh, uh, mm. New York. Exactly, exactly, right? Everyone there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I started like opening up and integrating both and, I mean, even even for many years, I had short hair, and this is new, kind of, because I realized that uh, there's certain things that I need to do even physically to remind me that I am. And it's not that I have to have long hair and do the 
girly thing and you know there's nothing wrong with doing the girly thing but it's like mm -hmm. how can i embody that in a way that i in my present moment all the time i'm i'm funneling and choosing which of the two things you know am i being receptive or am i being like creative you know so mm -hmm. That's that, and I lost the train of thought. So I don't remember where we were. So <laughs> what, wherever you want to go, you, I'll go with you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um. So uh. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you brought up the uh your feminine aspect, and like this is something that I've really been digging into recently. Um, because for a long time, I was kind of like uh, a universalist and almost like post-gender. I was like, oh, these are like social constructs, whatever. Let's just move past it. You know, let's just do whatever it is and not uh, throw some label of masculine and feminine. But then I realized like very recently that like there's something profound, like deeply profound about the masculine, the feminine and how it, it manifests and, 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 and the effect it has on, you know, um, on society. And that it's really important that we listen to them. And especially at this moment, I feel like there is a, a big role for the feminine to step up and really express itself. So I was wondering, like, like, what is the nature and role of the feminine, in your opinion, and and in in the current moment? What, do you, like, how do you think uh, it, it 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 plays out and expresses itself? Well, oh, I'm going to be very careful how I'm going to address this because I grew up again in a family where we could not talk about feminism because practically we had to become, you know that role my mother had to become like not just the caretaker but the breadwinner you know like so mm. her young energy was very strong my grandmother too and everybody around me was very much like that so when I would go out and hear the human rights of uh, you know the woman rights and everything I was like yeah okay but you know I don't have a dad and I would love to have that energy in my house and, yeah but men are this so I that discourse for me was always like very problematic because in mm. my personal life all I wanted was to have a male figure mm. to just come and say, hey, baby, how are you? How was your day? Like, you know, just be normal. And I didn't have that. So I never really was in sync with all my feminist friends, not because it's not okay not to have rights. And I also, because I'm more like a humanist, I am not pro this or against that. I'm never like in the middle. I am more like, let's see it from this perspective. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe let's go to this perspective. So for me, has always been this idea about how to integrate both. And when I discovered that the Trinity, like in many, many, many ways of thought, we always talk about the oh. Trinity. Trinity for me is the best way to see the two poles. When there's polarization, in my view, it's neither nor. Because I can embody being me. I can go over there and pretend that I'm you and, and, and have empathy and listen to your point of view. But until I don't go to a third point and see things from a th third perspective, I won't be able to grasp either. Mm. And for me, the Trinity is the most important. So it's not that the feminists are right and the male figure is, is wrong. It's just, yes, there is toxicity, but I have to tell you, in both realms, I think that uh, what feminism has done, uh, because it's been kind of limping for a long time, it has developed, it has made overdevelop a kind of anger that is really lying in the underneath mm. of a lot of women. And they, and they, and I say they, because I've been working very hard on how to work with my own anger. That's been the principal subject matter for me since I was a very angry girl, I was very angry. And the anger has actually shown me where to work. So I have taken mm. all my emotions, observed them, and I channel them in my work. I do channel them. So whether mm. it's fear, anger, I have more anger than fear. Fear is just like when I cannot do the anger thing, you know, it goes to the fear. But fear is just, fear has been very important in my life in the last years because I was at one moment, that I was frozen. And that's when I started really working. It was very difficult to work with the fear because when you're frozen, you're frozen. No matter how much you want, you just like, you don't see any, any light. Uh, but, but the anger has always been um, guiding me, pointing me like, I don't like that. And then I go and see, let me see why I don't like you. Uh, then I go, oh, okay. So, and I start inquiring, like I ask, I ask, I ask. And then I respond, respond, respond. And then I go to the third side and I go, oh, you know what, Albert was, kind of right and then but here hmm. and then that's where i find this this balance and that i call the synthesis or integrating the mm. two viewpoints because 
also those two points depend on the condition of that moment. Did you have breakfast? No, okay, you see, your sugar level went up. Okay, mm -hmm. did you have a good night's sleep? Yes, oh, that's why you were so calm. You know, did you meditate? So all these things are relative at every moment. So for me, there's no absolute ever. It's not absolute. Mm -hmm. It's all about the perspective, the perspective, the perspective. So for me, in this moment, and I said it before, I love that Rebel Wisdom was offering a lot of male people, like men, mm -hmm. the possibility to feel comfortable embracing their yin side. Now, I know, and this is something that I am really, really looking forward. I want to see how the female, we are going to readdress that because there's less women in rebel wisdom the kind of energy that is there of the woman including myself we're very young driven we're all initiators we're like ah, if you see the people no yeah. names i'm gonna say it, it's very young even me yesterday i had to like contact my pot because i was supposed to be contact and i haven't after 24 hours so i'm there already like i didn't say why do i always do that I said, oh. yeah. but um but that's my you know that's my design I, I i do another thing called human design that is um it's based on the date of birth and everything. And I'm, uh, my aura is initiator. I'm a manifester. I, and this is what I do. I like to open stuff and go and say, and, you know, um, delegate. I'm very good at delegating. Mm. That's why I direct a lot of the words because I can see the potential here. And then I go, hmm, and then I go, okay, mm. maybe we can do this. Do, 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 do. As mm. opposed to like doing it. Yeah, and so like little details. Yeah, I got you. No, yeah. I'm good at details. Oh, you're good at that. Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. you know, I'm the best at details, but I notice in my life that I can be more effective in my message if I have the ability to be in the detail, but also step back, be in the detail, step back mm -hmm. and, and do it See. all the time. I have more like a vision, you know, like a, the ego. The ego has this vision that is very, very fair. Like I can see everything everywhere, but when I I want something, I just go and, and, that's yeah. and I dig deep. And that's where all the layers of my work come when I, it's in the focus, in the left side of the brain is where I can go focus and get all the layers out. And then I go out and then I put them like this, like nobody else can see it and, and start shifting it. So I go, oh, okay, here, here, here. So it's, it's quite interesting the way my brain works. I mean, yeah, I mean, like you talk about I saw that you speak a lot about like synthesizing and integrating. And I feel like that's, that's what we want to do in like this, like this, this meta modern type of uh, society, this movement of where we can integrate all these different perspectives, multi-perspectival. And uh, I want to dig a little bit into your work. I know uh, this past Thursday, you participated in your first group show in your new city of Miami. Uh, congratulations. Um, and it was part of Vision Acuity, which invites uh, viewers to rethink topics such as identity, memory, and sense of time and space. And your work was Victory Over the Sun. Um, so I was wondering how this whole process was for you about you know, New City, this work, and what it meant. Okay. I'm going to start talking about the magical without talking about the woohoo. Magical mm. for me is a word that I love because magic is really when I am... Um, one with the universe that means that i'm vibrating resonating with what is supposed to be so things just happen to me not because i'm here sitting down waiting for it to happen they i allow things to happen things that i already wish for things like energy that i already projected that i want it just happened so miami was something that i had kind of like thought about it many years ago i used to come here uh, for the effort and everything i remember being in this neighborhood going like mm -hmm. Not if I live in Miami. When I live in Miami, I'm going to live in this neighborhood. But just ah, like, that's okay. the kind of things that I do when I'm with a lot of certainty, but not knowing even when. And it's more like a wishful thinking, you know? So um, I moved to Miami because a dream came to me in June 21st. And it's very mm -hmm. vivid. All my dreams are very vivid. The group that I have that is called We Are the Architects of Time, yeah. that was a dream. Do this. The next uh, work of art that I'm doing is called I Am an Optimist, an opera about the human condition, came in a dream. Uh, moved to Miami, came in a dream. Victory of the Resign. I mean, all of it comes to a dream, and I really listen. So the one from Miami was like, you got to go to Miami before August 10th. And I was like, oh, but that's around the corner. Uh, can it be Miami Beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very playful with it. So I go, all right, right. So I packed, and I moved here. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> 
wow. another thing that is very important yeah. not to tell because sometimes the energy is lost when you tell too many people mm. so just i didn't i just like few people very 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 few people and then i remember i i confessed that i was leaving new york on instagram and i had wi-fi on the airplane so i'm saying like and i didn't even say i'm moving out i just put a about, like, I took a picture of the of the airplane flying all over, and during the flight, I made some points, and I said, "Oh, all the whatever uh, houses that I lived in New York." Mm, thank yeah, you I saw much. that. Yeah. Yeah, and then mm. something like from one 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 two one one two three three one three nine, and people were like, "Are you going to Miami?" And I was like, "Oh, please don't spoil it," because <laughs> I was not going to say the word. Mm. So I moved here, and I called one friend, and he said to me, "You should meet uh, Nuria, this curator," and we completely hit it off at the very beginning. I, I haven't really seen many people, but I spent time with her when we went to the beach. And she runs this program uh, called Clandestina, which is clandestine kind of space where you, you, know, you have art. And she invited me to do like an intervention in this window, because you know, a lot of people are very afraid of going out and starting to do you know, the everyday life, especially at art, art related mm, yeah. activity. Uh, so this was perfect because it's a hotel that they're renovating, a motel, one of those like typical 19, I don't know, 50s, 60s uh, hotels in Miami, Art Deco, like one floor. And she just, she had the vision of seeing my work there. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. So let's do it. Um, and I went over there and I've done this piece, I think like this is the 13th time, which is really intervene the space like you arrive over there and you look at the space and you ask the space what the space needs so she needed a projection she needed to have like a light box during the day and night because it's very bright it was going to be impossible to project during the day so what can i do that it has that the, that makes the piece be alive day and night that has that can be viewed from many different places and still be compelling but shows different different um reveals different things from the same place so that's what i did i did some projections but i used a lot of elements like plexiglass and fabric and little threads i mean if you go very close you'll see that there are threads that i actually intentionally put there they wanted to clean the space it's, in, it's, it's a construction site still and i was like don't touch the dust what and i said the dust been here we're gonna leave the dust but no i want to just go and enhance the place like even Put the stuff in a way that you can see that little mountain of dust is important it's, it's there and i don't want to touch it so i went there very respectfully and just intervened the space and created this uh, experience that it can be viewed at night when you pass by this is like a us one it's very uh you know it's a lot of traffic there bus people walking uh residents so you can see it and it's and it's a it is an angle so you can actually see that something is happening and it's a many projections and then i made i i skewed the projectors in a way that there's light leaking out so you can see it's not perfect this piece is very much an integration of a lot of my work where i realized uh in 2015 after 20 years of marriage and sudden divorce that i initiated uh it last it, it was in seven hours i decided i'm leaving this and hmm. without even thinking like i didn't wow. prepare it i was like <laughs> But, but after that, I, that's when I started really integrating all my parts. And uh, one of them was, if I don't show my vulnerabilities, if I don't show that things are not perfect, I will always be disappointed. And I had been, I, I think that I had created an expectation about my marriage that I will never be separated from this human being. And all of a sudden I was the one who initiated and I was like, Tch. And then I thought maybe in order to understand who I am, I have to pick up the pieces that I left. And that's how I started working, integrating, just even the little stuff that I was like, oh, I didn't know I had you. Okay, we're gonna put you here mm. so I can see you. And uh. that's how I started making all the pieces, like um, especially picking up the stuff that it was like there on the floor that I had not been taking care of. So it was a re, and, and I did that also with myself. Uh, it, they were the hardest years of my life, 2016 and 17. I, at one point, I didn't even want to be here. It, I even, it crossed my mind. And that's when I found Simon and I went back to astrology. I was like, no, no, I can't, I can't just check out yet. 
like, but I thought about it. I, I had done all the lists. It's like, I can't be here. I can't be here. There's no meaning in my life. And I realized that the meaning I had given it to something else, to somebody else, to, to, a, to an ideal. And the moment that we project our expectations outside of ourselves, we would always, always be disappointed. Always. Because it's a projection. Yeah. So I said, what do I do? I said, I have to go back and again, pick everything up and just try to put it in front to see what I can do with it. It's like when you go back home after a long vacation and you forgot to go to the market, but there's still mm. some sort of food around. Cans yeah, it's like, <laughs> you got like, like a, oh, cans, it's bananas. Yeah, and then you yeah, make yeah. more delicious food because you go, mm, I never thought about combining these noodles with this, uh, <laughs> you know, this and that. And like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh and you're picking up the garbage to see what is it that you put in there. You know, it's a little bit like that. That's what happened to me. And that's why I use the word synthesize and integration because I realized that I was longing and this is a very New York thing. I was longing and looking for something that, that it was perfect out there of what it should be, how things should be done. New York is all about, it was all about that. At least mm. my experience of it. Yeah. Like if you do this this way, you're going to get here. And it was always about a checklist. I was mm. exhausted. Because I did every single thing in the checklist and I was still feeling the void. I was never satisfied. I was never satisfied. I wanted more. I wanted more. No matter what I had, I could not see it in the moment. I was like, yeah, that okay. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. But more, more, more. And now it's all about like, yeah, of course I still have wishes. Of course. We're, we're human. As long as we're alive, we're going to have this, you know, wanting because this is the energy of creativity. This is the young energy. It's like, I want to go more forward. So, mm -hmm. and then, but it's about combining the two. It's about how much can I hold? And so this pandemic, for instance, I realized one thing. If the vessel is not ready, any vessel, you, me, whatever. Mm -hmm. We cannot overfill it with water or because if it's too full, it's not going to receive. But if it's not open, it will not receive. So it's very important to understand us, us being vessels of, of something, of creativity, to see if we're ready for that moment. And then from that moment, know what's gonna happen. You know, like really take what it is. So it's, it's, and, and sometimes you have nothing and then you go, oh, but I could do, I could do something with this nothing, as opposed to, mm. oh, if it's not perfect. So I, I, everything changed in my life when I changed that point of view. I mean, yeah, that's amazing. And um, what you, when you spoke about being a vessel, that really resonated with me because, like, what I've been doing, like, in my like uh, in this these past few months, where I have some time to really work on myself, like, I'm opening myself up. I'm allowing the way I I uh, uh, look at it. I'm letting the universe speak through me. Like, I'm just emptying, and I'm just like, I'm just listening. And this is what I'm also trying to do with Noetic Nomads. I'm really trying to listen to what everyone here has to say. And then you as being an aspect of the universe, I'm listening to the universe and all that stuff. Um, so, and then again, I like to touch on integration because I mean, this is something that, you know, you're into and I'm into. And I noticed that people at Rebel Wisdom and also part of the STOA, I don't know if you're also uh, aware I love of the STOA. You lo well, you lo I've never seen you there. You go to the STOA? Uh, but the thing is, is, is like right now I, I have all the, all the, alert but yeah. i don't have time enough time to be part of all because I, yeah i'm a yeah. an artist so i have to be very picky but i receive all of it i always watch the videos mm. afterwards oh and i love what they're doing i i mean i have my 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 criticism about certain things in certain things but i'm not going to voice them yet until okay. I don't, you know? but i think or, or maybe i could i don't know i just for I think that the female voice is still lacking in a way that is meaningful to me. I don't want, uh, and I'm not saying anything about anybody, but I just, and the other day I even asked Simon, I said, where are the females? And then I said, oh, I'm one. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> not that exactly. I want to be a leader, but I think that that's, that that's where I am. So I'm going to say something. We're going to be very truthful. Like okay. when I joined uh, the class, yesterday or the day before and i heard them saying what we're going to do one part of me a year ago would have gone like oh, i've done this you know like mm. being super, yeah like super bypassing arrogant. like yeah yeah arrogant like i there's an arrogant side in mm. my life, believe it or not it's like oh, and i will go like now or very upset because somebody has a better idea how to implement a better mm. way to implement ideas that i have 
and it has a lot to do with validation. I'm gonna talk about like being creative, uh. the validation, like I and, and original for me, those words are very important uh, because they're part of my design. So, but now I'm seeing like great other people are actually doing the work that I wanted to do. So that means that I don't have to do the work, but then I can actually come and enjoy that the platform is being done and be mm. part of the platform from where I am right now, not where mm, I wish yeah. it. So I'm, I'm giving a lot of value to what they're doing. Still, I see that there's like, and there's a couple of people there, women that they want to embrace that conversation. I have my, my doubts about making a group only about women mm. because that's still dividing. I've never, I, it took me a long time. You know, I think that I'm a millennial in, um, in disguise <laughs> in a good way yeah. or also my other joke and, and don't take it wrong because I love Chinese culture. That's why I studied for a long time. Mm. So I always say I look Colombian, but deep in my heart, I, <laughs> I've been in that culture many other lives. Uh, I see. I, yeah. I, I learned Chinese a while ago and um, to m more like the calligraphy and the philosophy because I needed to understand the, the laws of the universe. Uh, mm. And Taoism gave me all that. And from there, I went back to the West. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. But it was, it was all rooted in the tradition of Tao. It's all, mm. that's where I am like, not an expert, but I spent many years there understanding the yin and the yang, understanding the five elements, understanding I do Chinese medicine. I do, I don't do any of the normal, like I even do, have, I shouldn't say this, but I do have to control myself. I do, I, I understand the meridians. I understand energy from the Chinese perspective. And that's where, because, and I know I'm going uh, around. When I was that's exactly there, what I want. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. I, um, my favorite program when I was growing up, because also I'm like, I told you like I'm very magical. So I'm always looking for those moments of synchronicity or mm. something like that. I didn't even know that was what it was called when I was little. So when I was little, the most, one of the most popular programs on TV was uh, Kung Fu with mm. David Paradigm. And I remember oh, yeah. I'm like completely taken by the little like grasshopper and this old man, you know, the wise, the sage, you know, Lao Tzu, mm. whatever kind of figure. And I will go like, I remember like playing around, going around and looking, stopping on the TV. And I will look at the old man and go like, one day I'm going to find you. And then I will go around. And then, because I was looking for that idea of a wiser person, wiser person could be a female, it doesn't matter, that will remind me who I am. Just remind me, mm. not tell me what to do, but remind me. This mm. authority figure was not somebody who's going to tell me what to do, but somebody who's going to say, hey, stop playing. This is the time. And so mm. I found that in New York. I found that in New York. And I think that the reason why I stayed in New York for so long was because I developed all my being with the teachings, with the incredible people that they were living in New York. That was what New York was for me. Mm. Give me the language creatively and also spiritually to be, to give me license to be myself. I had to give myself the license. Nobody gave it to me, but I, mm. I didn't know I had to. So that was uh, where, yeah, and um, you keep uh, you bring up a uh, Taoism, and that was actually uh, like when I was uh, first when I first went to community college, and then I dropped out. But I was, and then I studied like Eastern religions, and I was like, you know, like I'm I'm Korean, but I'm not into that. I was actually raised Catholic, like you, Catholic yeah. school communion, and all that. So I was like, uh, I learned about Taoism, and I read the book of Chuang Tzu, yeah. and I was like, oh it's my, my god, it's my favorite. It's the best. You read it, and it's like, oh, wisdom, wisdom bomb, wisdom bomb, wisdom bomb, over and over again. It's so good. And, um, and, and when you brought up, oh my God, when you brought up the lack of wisdom at the Stoa, that is amazing. Cause uh, at the Stoa discord server, I kind of got in trouble cause I started screaming. Sorry if like anyone at the Stoa or Peter's listening, I started basically screaming at Peter Lindbergh for not having enough women at the Stoa. And I just went at him. I started attacking him. I feel bad, but because I, I, I felt the same things you, I was like, you know, so stuff was great. Like, they, like they're bringing all these amazing people together and there's so much power. And I say like, but they also have responsibility. It's like, where are all the, the female voices? Like, where are like, you know, cause, cause you know, we talk about the feminine aspect. Like they're the ones like, you know, like men, like if you want to talk about archetypes, you know, the masculine creates civilization, but the feminine creates community. And it's like, we don't need civilization necessarily, but we need community. And it's just like, where is it? And like, I, I do see them moving 
in that direction. So right, but you know, one thing that. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say is like in a more abstract way, we all have the feminine. Mm, so it yes, is the yes. question is like because I asked the same question and I said, but I'm I have feminine aspects, so am I willing to go there and and be part of it? You know, it's, it's a question directly. How mm. how much of myself I want I'm willing to put in, and I, that's been the question the last few days. Like, how much of my time I want to invest in this community? I mean, right now I'm limited because I have a lot of deadlines, so there's no way. Even if I wanted to, there's no physical uh, possibility at this moment that I could engage myself more than what mm. I am, uh, which is okay. Um, but the question is this, and, and I think that because the male has been, and I'm going to say something, I don't know, who am I going like to say? Free, free speech, everything yeah. goes, no, doesn't matter. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think that the male image has been repressed enough since the 70s mm, yeah. that you guys that are born in the 80s and 90s are already coming here with the information to say, you know what, enough. And even the non-binary, I think, is a kind of way of telling that non-binary means like we, we should not be opposites we should be integrating you know? mm, I, I don't exactly. think it literally like we don't have any gender or we're not but i take it more not that they don't have of course they have gender but um I take it more symbolically like there's no need to divide it's not about the division it's mm, about the integration so yes. it, but, but the integration happens inside so what happens is until the women don't feel that what they're looking for it's inside of us. We're not going to be able to emerge and have conversations that are meaningful at the same level until we don't integrate that part. Mm. So for instance, I am starting to integrate it in a way that personally started like a couple of years ago with like, okay, I had friends saying, why do you have, I had really short hair. I don't know if you saw in my Instagram. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, really yeah. short hair and very tough looking. Why? Because I'm a marshmallow inside. Mm, and so I exactly, have to like, yeah. create this persona like I'm cool I'm a woman but don't look at me in a sexy way do not think for a second that I'm stupid la mm. la 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 so I had yeah. like I, I kind of created a persona being tougher and tougher and tougher and that stick with me for a while and I kind of liked it I, I like when people like I because I, I do a lot of audiovisual stuff uh and I have to deal with male figures and there were, and sometimes construction workers because I do a lot of work, uh, like commission work. And I, I was always downplayed by like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. So this is the funny thing. I realized that the best way to deal with them uh, was not saying we're equal because the moment that I established that language, it was war. They will always oh, try to mm. show me. So then I realized, I said, maybe I should do the girly thing. And that's when I got them working. So I would go like, I can't do it. I cannot, re but like this, like, I cannot reach that. Oh, you know, I'm petite. And they would go, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is so ridiculous. I'm trying to prove to them that I'm their equal, but the more I fight and scream and saying that I'm their equal, they don't listen. But when mm. I say, ah, they do. And I said, oh, okay. So I'm going to start. I'm, I'm not even going to use the energy that way. I'm just going to be me. So I started opening up that girly side. Ah, I see. Okay. And even with my girlfriends, I was like, that we were all trying to be like, oh, we're serious. Our deep conversations were the most girly of all. What are you going to wear tonight? Oh, I got this. <laughs> Shoes. Oh, my God, what did you get? This? <laughs> and talking really girly. Yeah. And, and things that I never thought that I wanted to talk about. Of course, I like all that. So it was like embracing stuff that I myself had canceled because it's not okay because mm -hmm. I'm going to be seen as less. So it's, I think it's about each one of us, whether you're male or female, see with why are the reason why, when, and why are you still relating to yourself in a way that you're not allowing the other part to be? Because when mm -hmm. that's integrated in inside of you, then you can actually have a conversation at all the levels. You can talk about yes. deep stuff, you can talk about, and you don't have to divide it with gender. So. When I say that I'm a millennial wannabe, is because one of the things that I noticed, and when you guys started, like, and I think you're a little bit younger. I think you're probably in the 90s. 80s, 80s, yeah. 80, are you okay? You look yeah. very young. So, yeah. um, Thank you. <laughs> and, and here's, and when I generalize like that, it's because of uh, evolutionary astrology. We sort of like look at generations with a very specific uh, uh, purpose. 
every generation has mm. a purpose for evolution and so and and they're sort of like integrated in in and as a collective as like okay the people with pluto and virgo 1958 1970 we have some sort of energy that's asking us to kind of question uh and discern and see where things are not working in evolution then mm. the people who are the next batch that is until 1983 um they're questioning the evolution of relation how we re to relate now the pluto generation of power is you it's more how are you going to confront deeply mm. life in that situation so like this is not working like really there's a lot of drama in there but it's it's good and then the kids uh, are already growing up right now. They're born after 1988 until 2008. They're more questioning about the reality. These are the ones that are right now really questioning what is real or not. And they're becoming more cynical about it, about really the truth. They're the really truth seekers. So it is interesting when we um, understand the perspective of human beings as we are all uh, different in design, but we are collectively chosen a specific moment in time, a culture, a family agenda to embody this path. Mm. When I look at it from that perspective, mm. I can find more connectivity to who I was when I was four years old and I was already expressing that energy. I was already like thinking, I remember one of my first things is like, they buy me, um, uh, how do you call that? Like a balloon with, you know. The oh, with, yeah, yeah, okay. Let's yeah. stay in the air, like, but you have to hold it. Mm. A balloon, I think. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was wondering. Like, yeah. Yeah. And they buy me a balloon and I'm like super excited. I'm four or five years old, probably four. And we get inside of a car and my dad's still alive. And I remember he just tied it up, you know, not too hard in my in my finger. And he says, you can just like hold it outside of the window. And I was like, I couldn't believe that balloon. I was like, oh my God. Hmm. And all of a sudden this thing disappears and I start screaming, no, nah! drama. No, nah, I lost it. And then, it's gone, right? It's like, mm. there's no, and then I said, I don't want balloons because they're like life. They're full of illusions and I'm going to be disappointed. And my father, I remember he turned around mm. and goes like, what are we going to do with her? Because they, I already, every question, every drama, it was about life and death situation. Wow. It was not, it was all about questioning what are we doing here? And those were the big questions. Mm. So it was, it was evident since I was little that I would come to be this, but of course I'd make every choice so when i see human beings i see them not as a gender or or nationality or anything i see them as human beings with the potential of becoming their own selves and one of the phrases that i always say is like i want to mm. connect to people so i can communicate and inspire you or anybody or you inspire me to be myself because mm. this is really what i think we came here to do to become Individu individuate to to really understand who we are so we can serve that's why you got caught with that phrase yes how yes. i'm of service is because if i am being true to my nature i am doing service mm. by Bring your unique gift yes 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 and that only um and that's why i studied astrology and, and understand human design and all that is because each one of us is made of components that are very particular so I learn it's a language, just learn how to interpret that. Mm. And, but at the very end, every individual will do whatever they want or not with this energy. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, you spoke about like, uh, about I, I want to touch on that later about uh, astrology, evolutionary astrology, and your very interesting uh, TikTok archetype, uh, Pallas Athena. <laughs> I think that's very interesting. Uh, so but I mean, when you, when you again, uh, the theme of integration comes up and um, like I said, I know it's like, oh yeah, this is where I was going with this. I forgot. So like, again, people, the wisdom, uh, the stoa, the overall sense-making community, we tend to be both left and right brain oriented. For like, for example, my two um, pod mates at Sensemaking 101, Robin, he was an international banker. Uh, he, he, uh, he worked with the Rockefeller family, but then also he was a sculptor. Uh, later on in his life but his father told him as a child oh don't do sculpting don't do art do something else and Thea uh her she was good at math so her father was like hey you should become an accountant and she's like no and then she went on to be like a holistic chef a dancer and a breathwork specialist and I worked at a tech company in Manhattan but I was actually also training to be a, a vegan pastry chef and I opened I almost opened up my own vegan donut shop Oh, and wow. then, you know, yeah, so it was like, it's all these different things. Like, like it tend to be very integrated. And like, 
again, like these, they're all like these, these integrated, like, like, like individuals tend to be in the sensitive community. And I was like, is there like, is there like a, a certain theme? Is there something about this integration about, is it like, like a artistic sensitivity? Like we're more in tune with what's going on. And, um, and also, and on, uh, uh, to, to continue on that, one of the themes that's been going on since, of course, since this COVID situation is that of the essential worker, you know, the, the grocery clerks, the delivery people, you know, the, the, the you know, people who are like, you know, who need to be here. Right. And then, and like all these other people in like this late capitalist society, they realize, okay, I don't really need to be doing this stuff. Right? Like, I don't need, like, do we really have to do this? Everyone's like sitting back and like rethinking of, of what, what they should be doing, what should be done. And I was wondering, you know, cause of the artist now, and, and I, I saw you post on your Instagram, you've been thinking about what the purpose of an artist is. So I'd really like you to dig into like, like, where do you think artists fit in to this current moment? And what do you think their role is? Well, let's talk about art, creativity, and life mm. in the same sequence. Like, to be artistic is to be creative. To be alive is to be creative. Mm. So I don't have a difference. I don't make a difference in art and non-art. I actually mm. happen to be a professional artist because I make a living out of it. And I'm very, very, very grateful. And I'm very, uh, like, I can't believe every day I just say, you know, I'm so, so happy to be able to be embodied in this life and be able to do what I do because it's, 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 I have a lot of fun now. I am not different from any other person who's embodying its own purpose through whatever service they're doing, whether it's a dentist or I don't know, um, somebody who's doing something that they love. Because I think that the most important thing that connects all this is like, if you are doing things with love and joy, you're enjoying, mm. then everything that comes out of you energy wise is going to create something even better. But if I am sitting down in an office and I'm just cursing my boss because mm. he is this and that, and I don't make any changes in that situation, I am not being of service at all because I'm not serving myself purpose and i'm not serving anybody around me because i'm always moody and i'm always like nah, 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 nah. and my boss can tell already that i i'm not doing my work mm -hmm. so just to go down to that level so i am not i am very grateful for who i am and, the, and what i chose to be um but everybody can find his own sense of service not and you don't have to be artistic but you can be creative because a lot of people say, oh, I wish I was creative like you. And I said, well, you, you are. You're creating life every day. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the, the workshops that I, that I do is called The Well. It's come from the uh, exagram number 48. Um, the Well, in ancestors' time, when you were trying to find uh, if you could build a, a community somewhere in the world, you needed to make sure that you had water. Because with no water, no life. Yeah, okay. So yeah. a lot of the cities and little towns were, you know, near streams or or near places where you could dig in the in the soil down and get some water out. So many many old towns have the well as a very important place, not only for the water to come out, but a place where the community will meet. Yeah. So the well for me is a metaphor of everything, meaning that we are the vessel. We are the vessel. But we need to find the water. The water is always in the undercurrent. And so if we, and, and the water is creativity. The water is the quantum field. The water is the power, the God particle. The water is the, the potential that I have. The water is the matrix. The water is, uh, I mean, we can nominate and use so many words with the description of what I'm talking about, depending your perspective. You can do it scientifically and saying, well, there's no matter or there's dark matter or wh whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter because I'm not interested or the void as in Zen, yeah. emptiness. It's not empty, it's actually full. <laughs> but so you have that, but if you have the well and the water is there flowing back and forth here and there and you cannot reach the well, how can you drink? So it is very important that you understand that as a vessel, you have to 
prepare yourself to be able to go down, let's say metaphorically, to go deep inside, to understand what where your creativity, I mean, what kind of shape you're gonna you have as a container so the water comes mm. out and you yeah. become it. No longer thirsty, no longer looking outside, no longer, hey, Alfred, bring me the water. It's like, no, I have water here. Of course, we can mm. make, yeah. make an, an exchange right now, but I am very directly connected to my well. So in that in that um, workshop, basically, it's, it's a very simple because I, I like simple and, and easy. It's where I I teach something that I know in my Taoist teacher and my Buddhist practices is I teach people how to observe. There's only one difference. We have been trained for many years to think, but not to feel. Mm. So conversation, uh, it's very different when I say, hey, Albert, what do you think about, you know, did you watch the debate? What do you think about the fly? <laughs> you know, yeah. or you go, how did that fly make you feel? So complete that, you know, it's just mm, yeah. Yeah. the fly can make you feel, uh, it made me giggle a, a lot because, and I think I posted something that we're all poop in the making. Yeah, I saw that post. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how the fly made me feel and mm. what it made me feel, everybody reacting towards the fly, thinking that they're better than whoever has the head where the fly is. Exactly, right, yeah. And that judgment, you know, I'm like, you're a fly in the making. I mean, you're going to be poop and the poop is a fly, the fly is a poop. I mean, what came first, you know? So mm. it's very interesting to see how we get so disconnected from that source. So again, as an artist, because I, I chose this path, I could have been a politician. I could have been, I had so many, Albert, I had so many interests when I was in high school. Mm. I could have gone, I wanted to be a lawyer, but then I thought like, oh, too many rules. Like, because I'm always trying to see how I'm going to not skip them, but not abide by them completely. I, I question authority all the time. Mm, yeah. uh, always in trouble when I was growing up. Not, not anymore, because now I learn how to address my discomfort. I don't clash. And that was mm. the... All the, all the Eastern tradition um, techniques and technologies taught me how to go around uh, by, you know, observing. It's observing. It's mm. by observing that I really understand the world around. So, uh, yeah, I guess to answer, to try to answer the question directly, it is, it is that we are all, there was a great artist called Joseph Beuys in in, in England. In Germany, he he was. I think he died in 1986, but he was very, uh, very active in the 60s. And he was a teacher at the Kunst Academy in Dusseldorf. And he was claiming that every human being is an artist. And people were like, "Why can you say that?" Mm. But his work was. I mean, you should really dig it out because his work was always about life and death and what we're doing here. Very, very much about what we're talking about. Uh, but in a way that saying, you know, if you don't know who you are, how can you be of service in society? So the social okay. service can happen when you are making service out of you. Before mm, then, yes. just back, 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 back from <laughs> me. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was wondering, because I was like, you know, like, I had a feeling that you say that because like you're you don't think in a in a in a dualistic way because just like it's not just like there's artists and then there's non-artists like we're all creators and we're all creating at all times and um and so like and it's to you like to you visual art is is your well I want to just say it's your symbolic language because like again you're like all multimedia and we're all creators in all aspects but like primarily speaking um in terms of your work right now art is your symbolic language visual art you know, spoken language is another kind, written language another kind. And um, there's a story that I came across that I love to share with you and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So I was watching a video on the Silicon Valley Health Institute YouTube channel and it was a doctor um, and she was, um, she was talking about um, the colors and how they relate to nutrition, right? And she, she gave a story about how she was finishing up her PhD and she was emotionally stressed. And then she started to paint and she started to see her life in terms of colors. And she stated that she was in a space of no mind. Mm -hmm. And that she was, she was connected to a place deep within her. And she would paint in orange and pink when she was feeling emotional with a certain spiral design. And then one day after months of painting the same design over and over again, her husband said to her, honey, I think you've been painting your ovaries the entire time. Oh. And yeah, and why this is relevant 
is that for her entire life, she'd been dealing with chronic reproductive issues. And she was like, I don't, she's like, she couldn't, uh, she, she, she couldn't give birth and she had like endometriosis and that she, every day she tried everything. She, this is why she got into health and she got into medicine. She wanted to heal these reproductive issues. And then, you know, she was like, whatever. And then she went, I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. But it's like, okay. Yeah. And then she had an art gallery showing with family and friends. And then that year she got scanned and her fallopian tube was unblocked and her uterus was healed for the first time in her life. Yeah. And now I'm, I hear that story. And like, there's a reason she told that story. And I'm like, we can only speculate, but like you as an artist, from your perspective, what is it, what do you think happened there? What exactly was that? Well, I've done something similar with me because I had like uh, uh, issues, let's say, I don't know how to address that word, but I, there was a moment when in my forties when I started, and that's the reason why I started going to Taoism is because I had a dream, uh, everything's in dreams. So mm, I, yeah. had dream. I had a, there was a moment where my career was taking off in the beginning of the, in the end of the nineties. And I was like, you know, so I was, yeah, 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 wow, party here that not taking care of myself. And I had always been connected to my spiritual side, but there was a moment that I put like a gap and I was like, fuck that. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, let's drink, let's have drugs. Like I, you know, just like, let's have fun. And I was all the time, like, I don't want to deal with connecting to myself. Mm. And there's one dream one. I, I'm, I'm traveling a lot with, I have a lot of exhibitions and then, but it, and I was not eating well, I was not sleeping well, I was smoking a lot of cigarettes, like really, like mm. um, I was very unhealthy to be 37 years old. I think it was 37, 38, I was at the time. And so I have this dream uh, that two big round things are chasing me down a hill, more like a San Francisco kind of hill, right? And then when I turn around in the dream, they're my ovaries, but they're huge, huge. Oh. And I'm, I'm in Italy. I'm about to start a show or something and I'm with a friend and I said oh yeah I had this dream and she goes when was the last time you went to a doctor and I don't go to doctors mm, no. me too me too yeah I, went to the doctor. I do acupuncture I do but I don't go to doctors mm. and, and at the time I was not even seeing an acupuncturist or anything I was not really connected to anything I can have this incredible ability not anymore to unplug myself from my body I, I don't do that anymore because I know that I have to be embodying and grounded and all that but anyway mm. so i she says to me i have an appointment with my gynecologist and i think we were in torino and she said let's go and i said okay so i was i went over there she made a scan and the woman came out and she said you're gonna have children but like this she was like you're gonna have children and i said eh, i don't think so why she goes um because you have a huge ball like this and it's going to burst any moment and then you're gonna die and I was like, whoa, that's not whoa. Awful. And then, <laughs> but at that moment, my, my awareness was like limited. And I remember I said like, oh, what's the plan A is the first and the plan B, what would that be? And she says, well, I'll give you a hormone. She didn't say it was a hormone. I'll give you a shot. And then I said, and it will disappear. She said, yes. And I said, how much? She said, 600 years. And I go, whoa, what's mm. in it? And she said, well, and I said, is it going to be one shot? Because you know, like magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me go to the ATM. So I went, I bought the money and my friend was like, aren't you going to ask what it is? And I was like, no, oh, I didn't want to deal with it. So I was like, no, we pay. Mm -hmm. I get the shot. Within one week, I was menopausic. I was in my third. Oh. Yeah. And I called her and I said, what the hell? And she goes, well, you didn't ask me for second, uh, second side effects or, or oh my God. But if you're having this and you're having that, you can take this and that. And I go, oh my God, I just enter into this puzzle that I always heard that I was not, because I was not paying attention. I was like mm. completely, but because I was scared in that moment, my, my, my fear led me to the wrong decision immediately. Cause I was like, oh. I didn't even thought about not taking it. I just went to the ATM. I remember or something, I had to go to different ATMs to get the money and then come, give me the shot um and it took me nine months to get back in, tr in track and in the middle of it a lot of bad things started happening to me like not bad but i couldn't get inside of uh, uh, england because at the time i have a colombian passport and i didn't know it was not part of the schengen like stuff that never happens to me started showing me that i was in the wrong path like mm -hmm. a lot of disruption so at one point I'm in the plane um, coming back and I said, I remember just go up there and I speak to my dad that is dead many times. And I said, daddy, 
show me the light okay i'll pay attention you know like almost like calling back the yeah. gods or i'll do whatever i'll do whatever and i remember i go the next day to this health food store and to buy something and there's a book that falls synchronicity yeah there you go yeah i have <laughs> life is full of those stories because yeah. i I'm, I'm into the magical so i pick mm. up the book and it says something like uh how to heal your menopause or something like that and i was like okay. maybe this is what i'm having you know like mm. this because the symptoms were very drastic within a week it was i was another person it, very heavy symptoms i was sweating a lot like I, I didn't know what a hot flash was i was getting completely mm. wet i was forgetting things i was very nervous and i was like what are these side effects and did, i mean that's why i called her it's like what on earth did you give me so she said well you're gonna have this what she said you're gonna have some symptoms like pre like if you had menopause and so this book falls and i go oh, you know, menopause. and there's this chinese guy in the picture going like this with a like, <laughs> like and i go okay i have to buy it and then i open the book and it says if you're reading this book is because it's your destiny I was like, so i go okay. home and, and i say i have to google him so i google him and he's in Chinatown, oh, across, the street, a, across the river. Mm. So I said, I remember saying, can I have an appointment? And the woman says, oh, no, 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 Mr. Whatever is like booked for, for, for months. And I go, oh, well, I'm going to give you my phone number. Within like three hours, she said, you're so lucky somebody canceled. And I said, I went over there, went over there, a very cold Chinese person, like not like the master that I was looking like when I was little, like the one who's going to teach me. And he asked me only one question. This was so like that. He says, do you have faith? And that's a very interesting question for mm. me because I always had faith in me. And I said, sure. And he goes, stand up. Uh, because I told him all the things. And he goes, do you have faith? And I said, yes. He goes, stand up. And I said, okay, close your eyes and do like this. I, I don't remember if it was something like that. And he goes, okay. I'm going to leave and you stay like that. He, I was doing Qigong. I didn't know that was Qigong. I was standing up. I have never heard the word Qigong in my life. I, tai Chi, yes, not Qigong. Mm -hmm. So he comes back after half an hour and he goes, I didn't even open my eyes. I just stayed. And he said, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm, I feel grounded. I feel, and he says, good, do this. And then I, mm -hmm. then I started coming back. And he goes, come for the next session. So little by little, he taught me Qigong. Little by little, he showed me. And then I started asking him, what does he say over there? He says, you want to learn Chinese? Yeah, you study. So that's when I started studying Chinese. And then um, anyway, I, I ended up being at another Taoist master, not him, because he was very harsh. He was very harsh. I didn't like his energy. It was too harsh, too. I don't want that kind of energy anymore. I want soft. Um, but that's how it led me to understanding that I had to reconnect to my source. I had to reconnect to my dreams were always telling me always. So in my art, um, the way I do is like, I, I bring out what is coming from those dreams. So I really pay attention and I am not disconnected from my symptoms, from what's going on. Like yesterday was a very heavy day, astrologically, like the planet of instinct is like squaring 90 degrees, the planet of, of evolution. And in my chart, it was exactly, so I, I felt there was like a lot of, not anger, but the energy was very conflictive and it was very fiery energy in my stomach. So I had to really do a lot of practice yesterday, like lie down, go for a swim, like really. So I really listened to dreams and to what's happening in my body to see how I'm going to do because back in the day everybody was his own shaman back in the day people knew how to take care of themselves back in the day people knew what to eat or not to eat and that's why i love chinese medicine and, and tcm and all that is because and the food has the energy sorry the food has energy so there's certain moments where it's better not to have a peppermint tea and it's better to have a ginger tea because energy goes up and down so i need to understand if my energy wants to go down and it's stuck here or is willing to go up? Am I too tired? Is my spleen energy low? Is my yin kidney energy not happening? How many hours did I sleep? Okay, so should I take something warm or cold? So that's how I started applying all the principles of Taoism into a daily life with food, with colors. Colors are so important because colors bring frequency. 
And my work started yes. having more color after my divorce. Because I started wow. seeing more colors. What happened with my divorce was this, and I'm not you know, saying that this person was this or that. I had given to my relationship all the power. And I had taken it all outside of me. Hmm. And I had landed into a situation where I felt that I could no longer grow as a human being because I had given everything to the relationship. And I think that happens a lot when you create expectations about what a relationship is. So once I got the divorce and it was a lot of suffering because it's almost like I saw myself from the outside saying like, I just gave everything here and I'm empty. So Mm -hmm. it's been a, a journey to come back, back into my vessel. And to be mm. very aware of what I give to whom and why. And also what I, when I said no, like this week for me, it's about, and that's the reason why I, I, I kind of joined the sense making and, and my purpose is going to be like, I don't want to cancel people because I have the tendency. I, I started seeing during pandemic that I was canceling. Everybody's like, this was me on the phone. I'm follow, I'm follow, I'm follow, <laughs> I'm follow. Oh, no, I'm falling for the <laughs> block, block, block. And then I said one day, like, what, are you going to be alone with you? Like, you will have to create some avatars in Facebook to communicate. Mm. I, and then I thought, yeah, but then I have to put, oh, how to say, like a boundary because I'm too open. So then I said, wouldn't it be mm. easy that you work with that, Monica, as opposed to like, so yeah, it's true, it's true. So that's where I'm working right now. My goal by the end of 2020 is to be able to be in a situation where I can not get overwhelmed if I listen to people talk what I think is stupid <laughs> or label, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And just be able to listen and not be overactive. And, but also be able to set up the boundaries to people that I, I actually invite to suck my energy. Because yes, yes, yes. in order to be open as I am um, creatively, I cannot close that. I cannot close mm, that exactly. opening. So a couple of things. I use hats, so I contain my my aura. Interesting. So that's like your your thinking around that? And yeah, interesting. I protect this more than here. Mm. Psychologically, we're shutting off. We've been shut off, shut down. Psychologically, the mask. Oh, I'm not, I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking uh, about psychology. Yes. The, the symbology of covering and not being able to speak. And I'm all about, I'm all about being eloquent. I'm all about, I, I mean, you saw, you see my group and you see, I'm all about expressing. Mm. If I cover, I will immediately feel that I have no voice and that would not happen to me. Mm. Yes. I will wear the, I don't even call it a mask. I will, I will wear the mouthpiece. Mouth, okay whatever is required but i think that psychologically and that's another reason why i'm getting into groups where i'm going to change the language because the language is full of energy and exactly meaning. yes yes and if i say too many times everything with the energy that is very low vibration and it's it's having a connotation that already is too disruptive in my life i don't want to use that word i want to find out the mm. meaning that you know same meaning but different vibration and so it and it's the same physically. First six weeks in the pandemic in in Brooklyn, it was horrible for me because I was I was scared. Everybody was scared. And although I know I'm not going to get sick because I do a lot of stuff, still going to buy food was an ordeal. Yeah. And everything. And I would not, I would start seeing. I I was so afraid of leaving the house. And one day I said, <laughs> No more selfies with the mask no more encouraging people and i got into fights that's when i started a lot of like the canceling because oh, I see. they're like how can you go out and i said do not judge how do you know my mask is not in my pocket and mm. when i take i do a lot of selfies jumping i i i was wanting to ask you about that what yeah i want to know about that <laughs> it's just a joke i <laughs> This is just a reminder that we can't take life too seriously. Yes, yes, yes. It's like, why not? Like, there was a moment when I was with my my ex uh, that I have no images. I I don't think we took pictures of each other for a decade. And mm. all of a sudden, it's like, I cannot rely on the other person to take a picture of me. You know, I'd like to document myself. So, I, and phones right now can do the best selfies with a timer. Why not? And I started jumping 
in my, as soon as I was finishing an install, I had this assistant list that she was great. She was like, why don't you just jump? And so I started jumping and then the next show and the next show. And then it was me just like jumping joy. But now this is for when I have an exhibition. I forgot about doing it the other day, but now it's like the jump is more, more in front of the camera, but it's more like, it's a moment of joy. It's a moment of like freezing myself in this moment now and, mm. and just, just laughing. I, I don't want to take myself too seriously. Yes. I want to talk about the serious stuff, but joke about it too. Like, I think that the best humor is the one where you self-deprecate yourself. That's the only humor that I can. That, that's all I do all day. Yeah. Yeah. So, I um, mean, yeah. Uh, amazing. And again, um, and bring, I mean, like you, you talked about all these different things. You talk about how you're in the Taoism and then uh, the I Ching, uh, human design, gene keys, uh, evolutionary astrology. I was like, wow, all these different things. And again, we've mentioned uh, about how you uh, you lead the uh, private Facebook group. We are the architects of time and where you share meaningful information regarding evolution. And like, I, I would like to dig into that a little bit. Um, so I was watching, uh, speaking of the Stoa, uh, I was at... Um, uh, a session with uh, Daniel Gortz, uh, the, uh, the the basically the the guy behind Hansi Freinach, the meta modern political movements, and um, he talked about um, he was speaking on the topic of art, in particular this time, and he moved he talked about how art moved from like the the primitive days from being undifferentiated from nature, like literally like you would see like a bison, you would literally just see like the the, the literal interpretation of like um, uh, you know like a like a tiger or something, and then it moved to magical. And then you start in, you start seeing all these like different like representations of like these grotesque uh, uh, godlike deity like uh, images and like these mixing between the natural and like the supernatural. And then it moved to the rational, where it was like you know like the where it was literally like 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 mathematical perspective and like deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning. Like we showed how quote unquote it is objectively, and then how it then moved to the abstract and universal where it's just like, you would just, it wasn't about like, like literal, li like showing literally what you're seeing. And when it was about showing like these different patterns and just these abstract patterns, not necessarily something that you see in your everyday world. And then um, it was something that really spoke to me and what had that I've realized over life is that artistic movements foreshadow social movements, like sometimes by hundreds of years. And so like with what's going on right now, like I'm very interested in your take of where is art heading right now? Where is it? Where is it heading right now? And how do you see that translating into social evolution? Well, when artists start integrating and, and start seeing themselves as a vessel, okay. So we talk about creativity and the quantum field and the place where we create is this place outside of beyond time and space. Mm, yeah. It has no you know, but that's where everything, that's where love is. That's where God is. That's where we connect. So mm. I'm very much into understanding that it's not a place that you go, but it's a state of being. It's a place where you tune yourself into to get it. And, mm. but again, that's not just for artists. Mm. Yes. I am using a language that is abstract. So I can probably inspire you to go beyond what you look at. Okay. Mm. And when the abstract movement really took off actually the first abstract art was weaving mm. oh and you i see you work with textiles as well and come on the way yeah. the weaving is the yeah. mother the doom is the mother of the computer oh yeah right. lovely yes yeah, binary yeah, yeah. system okay wow. so the ancestors need to express something because art is about self-expression Mm. So they already gone through the mural, like the caves, and they try to depict here and there some some symbology, some other. And you know, we're not going to get into symbology and architect because then we will need like a hundred days. To <laughs> <talk>. <laughs> but the abstraction happens in a moment in life. First, the, the ancestors. The ancestors depict like they they see what they what they're looking, what they're believing, and they have to make garments or they have to make bags or they have to do so they start weaving and they do the you know they do the two directions the binary system and then but because of the technology is limited it creates figures that are more like square mm. lines so it starts abstracting already so that's the first abstraction it's because of the technology so technology mm. limits the form 
but opens up another way of communicating because you have bags, you have, uh, or how to say, uh, carpets, or you have different things that you wear where you have, you can make lines, you can make different forms, but these forms come from observing nature, okay? Mm. Then you fast forward and you have the silk, this, you know, they bring the silk from the East and then you have the French people just before, during, or after the Industrial Revolution where they want to produce a lot of silk and, but the amount of silk that is produced is less in the, because of the demand. And so that somebody comes and observes and, you know, there's always this crazy scientist that goes, like, maybe instead of using this, we could use that. So they create the punch card. And the punch card was a hundred plus years more like before it's time. It took a hundred mm. plus years to get into the computer. Actually, there was a crazy wow. English man called Charles. I forgot the last name um, that he created something that it was called the analytical machine. It's the first attempt to have a computer. I think, is that Charles Lovelace? Let me just look yes, this up. Yes, 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 yes. Lovelace, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but Jacquard created the punch card, right? And oh. so then Charles tries to do this, but there's a lot, a lot of shortcomings and, and nothing happens. And then it's put kind of to the side. And then in the 50s, they start developing this, and that's what we have right now. But this is a this is we're weaving stories right now. Wow. If without one and zeros, binary system, without the polarity, we cannot create this. So that for me, that's abstraction. Now, I created a word was Urumu weaving time, and it's depicting this situation. I put the viewer in a in a room, there's all black, and the projections are sort of like revealing. The, the movements of a loom and then they're revealing the shapes and the forms that they're depicting something that has uh, you know relates to nature and then the nature you know uh, unfolds in front of your eyes from there on i was uh, invited by the vatican, like the vatican i saw that yeah i'm not catholic but it was invited by <laughs> I mean, I, I basically left the church when I was like nine. I was like, my father died. They don't have any answers. Goodbye. You know, like, and, and the answer that he's in heaven is not good enough for me. You know, like, <laughs> like mm -hmm. so I was invited to do a piece for the Venetianale that it was based on the gospel of John. He says, in the beginning, there was the word and the word was God. Mm -hmm. And I was yes. like, wait, what's not like that? I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that, and I, I'm going to question it. So I, my propose, uh, and it has shifted a little bit the way I was thinking then to now, because I, you know, I have more information about how. But I'm very happy the way I approach it. So I basically made a proposition saying that you cannot just connect to the sublime via the word. If you do mm -hmm. everything literal, literally, you're going to miss the the meaning really. Because it's not because it's about experience, about perception, exactly, yeah. about meaning. So I question, and I use text as form as opposed to meaning. And so I went into the beginning of the history of abstraction. I went to Malevich. Malevich was this um, incredible painter, short-lived uh, amount of, of work, but he created this movement, movement called suprematism. And in suprematism, he took away all the all the images, everything, and he just left like the black square. I I think you've seen that. His, his painting was a black square. Mm. And he talks about how we can connect to everything through our emotion. So when I, I was making this piece, I was like, I have to talk about Malevich. I have to talk about Malevich because he's the one who starts. After him, after that black square in 1913 that he did for an opera called Victory Over the Sun. Oh, yes, I see, yeah. Okay. I, all my work has a reference. Like, if you want to dig in, you. <laughs> I, I I told you I had to pull myself away from dig into you. It was just too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it's too many layers. It's too many layers. Yeah. And I make in my I make this reference to myself so I don't forget the next one and then. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that. So that's when abstraction. I felt like I had the right to bring abstraction in the form into my context. And now what I do is I weave all these layers of information. But for me, the space itself, where the piece is going to go, especially like public art that I do a lot of it, I want to talk to the site. I want to talk to mm. the place, and the place is going to talk to me. And then from there on, I'm going to take all the elements I use, colors, 
frequencies, abstractions, information, data. I love data, but data as form. So for instance, right now I'm finishing mm. a piece that is going to come out like in the next 10 days for the University of Texas, the Geoscience School, the Jackson Geoscience School commissioned me over 10 years ago uh, to do a piece for the building. But the piece was going to be projected in the sphere. But technically, I knew from the very beginning, talking to the technicians, that they had no clue how they were going to do it. And I, I did it. It was going to be in this projection in the sphere. But the moment of installation, I said I withdrew. I said I can't. So we had been waiting all these years to do it. So the solution was to do just a circular feeding. It's going to be three screens, but the whole idea is like that. Like like I'm circulating okay. because everything is cycle time. Blah blah blah. And I'm using data. I'm using um, a lot of like minerals. I, I I put some stuff that you see some there in, in my Instagram. It's not mm. there yet, but because I cannot unveil it yet. But um, yes. I'm putting. But I'm also weaving a poetry. I like words. I like words to because there's some people who have been uh, writing poetry to to the to the earth, and they're geoscience people writing. Oh, interesting. I just love that. So <laughs> so I'm I'm making a note to 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 the earth, to Gaia, in a way, with my own language. So, uh, I don't know uh, if I answered the question. <laughs> um, whatever. <laughs> it's answering whatever the world needs, you're answering it. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. It's great. It's like yeah. flowing, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's how I, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, so, okay, okay, so, like, again, like, we went to all these different topics. We go in, like, I wanted to go to, Again, like we talked about how, how you're into all these different things, I Ching and uh, 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 human design, gene keys and all that. And I want where we mentioned before, you're very interesting a TikTok account. Uh, it's Kakomon, A-C-A-K-O-M-O-N. Um, and, and and this is uh, relevant to- I, I changed it, sorry. Oh, you changed it, it. okay. Monica Ko and, and underscore. So it's my name, Monica, with this with a K and then C O and then underscore. I think that's what it is right now. Yeah. Okay. So correction. Her TikTok, Monica M O N I K A C O underscore. Yeah. And um, it's very interesting uh, because uh, I, I know that I saw you post about Uber Boyo. He was just recently on the Stoa about oh, yeah. the Jungian archetype. I was to him yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's really entertaining stuff. I really like his stuff. And then your character, Pallas Athena, like, uh, this is my uh, take on her. It seems to be a, a, a drag queen of some sort. And um, she, she digs into your uh, evolutionary uh, astrology aspect. And then um, you talked about how you, um, you described her as an intellectual woman who values her ideas more than her femininity. So this is so I'd really like to hear you speak more on who uh, Pallas Athena is and from what uh, she's arising. Okay, so Pallas, I call her Pallas. Uh, Pallas <laughs> was my liberator, like metaphorically. Ah, okay. Um, I I can be very eloquent. I can go. I mean, I, more than eloquent, I can be very communicative, um, and I never have problems like communicating or talking. But mm. one of the things that I was very always scared was to talk live on on social media i was like i will not do it ah. because i needed to have the control so during the pandemic i felt the need the urgent need to communicate because i was living alone and i needed to really communicate on real time i couldn't just like have a video and post it and i needed to say something so but i remember the first times i i, I did some lives i was shaking i was trembling i couldn't even keep it i couldn't even look at the camera i was I was too self-conscious about myself and how what people are going to think of me and, and all the stuff that I care so much about <clears throat> that I was about to bring down. Mm. And so I remember that I, I was like, oh, this takes so much time. I have to buy the tripod and the light and then the makeup. Oh my God, this is horrible. I, I can't do this. I can't do this. So one, I, one day with TikTok, I'm like, oh, this filter is funny. So I started doing the filters. And you know, I think that what happened was in the, my first live, I, by mistake in Facebook, I click on the filters and I had all these faces and I started laughing. And then I thought, oh, okay, this is the way it's going to be. I am going to be able to talk to people using my goofy side. I have a very goofy side. Mm. And then be self-deprecating, just like completely make mm. fun of myself. But I want to talk about serious issues. So how am I going to oh, combine that? And then I remember that when I was in school, I was kicked out of many, many classes because I was goofy. 
I was always saying, hey, when I'm talking about serious stuff, but nobody will like give me five cents because they thought, no, she's not, she's mm. just making fun. I so totally I thought, relate, I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to integrate that part of me that is the goofy side, that is, is fun, it's fun. I can be funny mm. and put it out there because that's going to soften my um, fear of what people think of me. That was then very important. All people are going to think that if I talk about astrology, I'm not in relating to this other kind of work so i was like okay this is the moment where i have to be very very courageous very courageous show who i am if it's not now then it's never because mm. i thought this is the most vulnerable of all time so palace was my savior she was i love her to death she's a part of me that says we can do it and we're going to be silly we're going to be so silly monica that you are going to love looking at yourself because I never would ever dare to look at myself in a picture for too long. I'll go like, oh my God, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Like criticize, I would be yeah. too self-critical. So another thing that happened in, in the parentheses was I started doing this meditation where I invited the Monica's that I have abandoned. Mm. I went back Hello. to when I was yeah. four years old and I said, she was there looking and she was waiting for me in that little room where like, the hell have you been and I was like we had a big cry like come over I'll show you where I'm living then the one that it was nine like what about me and I you come and live with me and so I now have 17 Monica's we live together <laughs> and we're all like crazy and one is cooking and the other one is talking to you right now and the other it's like you know mm. I have that so Palace Athena was how I was going to integrate the yin and the yang how I was not going to be seen as just like a woman or a man but palace uh, in astrology and also mythology she was one daughter of zeus of jupiter oh, okay. uh, but he trained her to be like very courageous and then with the mythology they they you know it was palace and athena there's like two figures you know and athena it's um it's also very important female energy but the reason why i chose this is because in astrology palace athena is an asteroid that really uh helps to decipher deciphering things decoding mm. things and i have it in sagittarius so i am here to decode what the truth is my truth i want to decode the truth and by and i'm going to use some sort of language to decode it myself so if i can communicate that language i might help other people decode themselves mm. so and then i thought it's you know palace for me when i think of her is very androgynous so one of the filters, but it, it didn't happen that I was sitting down thinking about it. It was just like, I started making this filter and, and then I put it up and I sent it to a couple of friends and they were like, oh my God, Monica, you nail it. You <laughs> nail it. That's, she's very funny. And I would look at myself and go, oh my God, this is too funny. The first ones, <laughs> I mean, all of them are hilarious, but then I thought I have to give her something to talk about so mm. she can have a purpose. So one friend of mine, she's a family that she called me, she goes, what's her name? And I said, oh, she doesn't have a, no, she has to have a name. So she's, as, as, so I gave her a couple of names and she goes, no, 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 no. She doesn't look like this. She does, I forgot the names. And then hmm. I said, I know it's going to be Palas Athena. She goes, perfect. Her name is Palas Athena. Tomorrow you're going to say, so, so I, I went and I said, my name is Palas. And da, 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 da. So I did it and I started talking about certain aspects of astrology. So I was like talking about, you know, the sun here, the Venus here, like the qualities, you know, and I spoke about the female and, 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 and masculine uh, archetypes, Mars and mm. Venus. And then I realized that I, I had to do, if I wanted to go all around, I, I was going to end up having to do a palace for like six months. And that freaked me out. I was like, no, I can't marry her that way. So I think it was because of the move to Miami that I kind of like one day I stopped uh, because I, I had to wake up every morning and, and she was like, Palace was like, what about me? I was like, oh, we have to do it. <laughs> then I had some criticism and, and that was interesting because I had some criticism by somebody that I ended up canceling his- Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he, uh, of course, I've studied evolutionary astrology. Of course, evolutionary astrology was- uh, voiced out by a man called Jeffrey Wolf Green and then Simon studied all the books and he gave it to me. And I understand lineage because I've done a lot of studies like that. But if I have only one minute, I cannot quote where I got the information every minute. Because yeah, I yeah, right. like, so I got this person that is in study group and he was so mean. I mean, he could have sent me a, a message saying, 
I would recommend that you use a hashtag with his name. I would have said, hey, thank you, I forgot. Mm, no, yeah. he was very like on the comments saying like, he was really dismissing me in a way that again, validation, that, that's something that it's very like mm, my little yeah. soft point, soft spot. I was like, ah. but then I thought, okay, he has a point. Actually he has a point. I have to address that this information is not, I'm, I'm not, it's not mine. I'm, you know, channeling it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so that's when I started noticing that I was like, when I get criticism, I will cancel people. And then I started, you know, hearing about cancel culture and I was like, but I'm canceling everybody. So, mm. so that was interesting to see how people show me in a daily life that I'm also part of that culture that doesn't want to deal with it, but now I'm embracing it. So Palas was my liberator. She still is. And I ended up doing one when I moved to Miami I'm in the pool and I'm like, what do you think? I'm not here. And I was going to find my, <laughs> yeah. but I, I will at one point when I have uh, more time to do that, I will probably, or not. I don't know who knows if she's going to survive uh, the weather. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope she continues. I mean, she has a lot of gifts to give to the world. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. And like, uh, I mean, like, that resonated with me so much because when you talk about Palace Athena, about like how she's your savior, she allows you to express that which was not expressed before. That's literally what I'm doing right now. Like I am Palace Athena right now. Like, are you kidding me? Like me going on YouTube, interviewing, like, you know, like talking to people and putting myself all on there. Like this is not something I would have ever done in the past. Like, and I had to, you talk about how like she's, you have one of 17 Monica's now. I literally for the past couple months have been envisioning in my head and I've been bringing more aspects of myself. Like right now I have like this, I have a gorilla Albert. I have a baby Albert. I have like a, like a, like a, like a sick misshapen Albert. I, I have all these different Alberts in my head. And like before, before, as opposed to uh, uh, rejecting them, like I, I was like, I sat there and, and I was present to them. And I accepted them and they accepted me. And now we go everywhere together. My little gorilla, yeah. Albert, little monk. <laughs> That's integration. That's integration for me. That's like when you say, okay, this is who we are because yeah. we are many different aspects of ourselves. The mm. problem is when we just only allow one to emerge. That's the problem because then ah, we are, yes. we are, and this is one work that um, Simon is, is helping me do right now that it, it's about how to face our shadow it's when we really kind of go back to the places we have neglected, the things that are, we don't like to see because that's neglect, like, or mm. we're not looking at the stuff that is ugly. Like, I don't want to see myself like that. So when you put it in front, you start seeing that it has beauty in it, that it's not that bad, mm. that it could be funny, that it could be gentle, that it could be this or it could be that. And you were at one point in time um, judging this part of you because you were expecting something else but under somebody else like guidance or or influence you know so i have like for instance really confronted a lot of those of things that make me very uncomfortable this is what i call for every day whenever something is making me feel uncomfortable i pause right now and i go hey thing how are you like not get out i'll go Let's talk about this. Um, let's see where you're going to lead me right now. That's what, how I take the emotions. And I have been very good at doing that in my work. I'm really good at that in my work. But I had not really extended that into my personal life. Now I integrated that. That's why I yes. use that word. Because it's no longer just only doing art making. It is the whole time. Every time. Mm, all exactly. The time. You're, we're, we're all creating at all, at all times, all moments. Exactly, right? Yes, yes. And so it's, and, and the power of it is to know that um, we give power to so many things because we don't assume the responsibility. Every time that you blame somebody or that you scream at somebody going like, ah, go get another knife. You're giving this thing the power of not allowing yourself to do. If you don't like it, can you change it? No. Okay, shut up and keep on walking. You don't like it? Can you change it? Go for it. But if I stay here and I don't like it and I scream and I yell and I just point out all your mistakes and I judge you, there's no possibility. There's no openness in judgment. There's no openness. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we come from a society that is very judgmental because the whole two, last 2000 years is based on that language. There are four things that I talk about. Um, one is shame. 
we're all shaming each other. Mm. Another one is victimization. Oh, I can't do it. You know, the government should have done this. Uh, the yeah. other one is control. Like, I'm so scared that I'm going to control you. And the last one is guilt. So people operate, like, I used to operate a lot from guilt. Like, oh, nobody else can do it. I'll do it. Mm. Okay. Or shame. Well, I better do it because then they're going to think I'm stupid. And I'm going to be shamed. Mm, yeah. What this guy did with the Instagram telling me that I didn't do this, he was shaming me. Mm. He was shaming me. You could, you can be very productive and creative if I say, hey, I have a suggestion. Have you thought about this? I was, think, I was looking at your feed and, you know, quite interesting, funny or not funny, whatever. Mm. Oh, have you thought about this? And you go, oh, thank you. And you can have a place where you can enter. If I go and take a picture of me jumping and I have my, I have my, my, my mouthpiece in my mouth like this, because I usually carry like that. And you come and you say, how dare you go outside without a mask? That's shaming me. Why do you want to establish a kind of relativity mm. or connectivity? There's no connectivity there. It's only shaming. So my invitation is like, oh, I, I hope you're having a good time with the, with the jump or, you know, um, you know, like don't, don't talk about what I'm not doing because most likely you are not doing something either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've realized I've really worked on that a lot. Cause I noticed I keep coming from a judgmental aspect in the past and I was, I was super critical and I thought I was doing them a service. I was like, Oh, if I point out all their flaws, they're going to get better. And then I realized, you know, especially with sense making one-on-one, they talked about the shadow and, and shadow projecting. I was just projecting all the stuff that I don't want to deal with. I was like, oh my yes, God. That, so you deal with it in the ways like you look at it and instead mm. of saying what's wrong with you, you look at it. The other serves as a surface. Yes. Okay, quantum, quantum me mechanics, you know, when, when you throw in the information, the surface is going to tell you if it's a wave or a particle, right? Because it's mm. what it's going to hit. The yeah. other is you. So you, when I talk to you, I listen to myself from another perspective and I see this interaction mm. and I see, Monica, you, you're talking too much. You're not making sense. <laughs> you're doo -doo -doo -doo. So I'm listening to myself always from another perspective because you serve me at this moment as a, as a surface where I can project myself and I serve you as the same. Mm, so we yes. can communicate. Right. But if I, if my stance, when I have this relationship, I'm only just shaming you, there's no creativity there. Also, mm. because you're going to feel criticized. Maybe I'm going to tap into something that your father told you when you were three and you already uh, got traumatized by it. He said, you serve no good. And, and I'm telling you, you know, uh, this is no good. Immediately, you're not going to respond to me from this moment, but you're going to go back to that moment and you're going to respond yeah. the same way you were protecting yourself because you needed some protection your authority figure did not protect you but criticize you and we're all coming from that especially from christian traditions it's all about mm. the shame what would the neighbor say i mean asia has a lot of what's the name the the face uh, um what's the thing that you call because we have it in colombia as well like what people really care about what other people think so oh saving face yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's big over yeah, there. Yeah. It's big in my culture. So people end up being the person the neighbor wants. Exactly. Not even once. It's what we think the neighbor wants. What we think they want. The Koreans are the worst. Oh my gosh. So I completely understand what you think. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Koreans. I one asked my ch Chinese teacher to understand Koreans because they're, they're <laughs> that I was very uh, interested in, in Korea. And I went to Korea and I love your, I love Korea. I love the landscapes. Uh, it just reminds me of Colombia, the mountains. Oh my God. Exactly. Mountains all down. Yeah. And I mean, he, he's Chinese. So he said something that I don't know if he's going to be like, his sense of superiority but it kind of makes sense he says because historically you're between these two big you know exactly like, exactly yeah. we understand koreans they're uh, more like the teenagers of asia and i thought that was so endearing i was like yeah teenagers they just want to do everything <laughs> yeah, exactly. so the enthusiasm is very like young mm, and, yeah. and willing to approach and 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 i always really appreciated the the curiosity and also but the craft best I love a Korean artist, the mm. craft 
and the attention to detail and the, the oh. attention to to what they're doing is beautiful and you see it you see it not only in the art right now but throughout you see the calligraphy you see mm. the beauty of every, like even the rituals like everything the food oh my god i love korean food <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, wait, so what do you like to eat is it just just real quick so what's your favorites I used to be a very big meat eater, like yeah. grass fed, grass fed. Grass fed, yeah. I used to buy this place in Brooklyn called Marlo and Daughters, like the- Marlo Daughters. Yes. I oh guess- yeah. Uh, just oh, real quick. Um, when uh, when I worked in Manhattan, I worked for a startup that helps restaurants order from their suppliers. My job was literally to go to every restaurant in Brooklyn, del- restaurant, bodega, coffee yeah. shop, and try to get them to use their app. So I literally went to every single one. I've been to every- and talked with all the owners. Oh, so yeah. I know Mar- every of them. Yeah. Did you go to Marlo? Yes, yes, I did. Yes. I mean, I don't remember exactly, but I remember being everywhere. <laughs> you name it, I've yeah. been there. Yeah. So they, they, in the feed yesterday, they were writing about how grateful they are to for all the people that give them, you know, the food and stuff like that. So I wrote to them yesterday, like... Hmm. Oh, I miss you. And I named <laughs> each one of them. Uh, and uh, I said, by the way, I'm, I'm, you know, greetings from Miami Beach. I, for some reason, I stopped eating meat here. I don't know, because I just want to make sure where it comes from. Okay. And I haven't, and there's no farmer's market yet here. So I said, um, I'm just going to go to fish. So, but it's interesting because I eat, I'm, I'm very much protein based mm-hmm. and vegetables. I've been for a long, like a long, long time eating vegetables and, and fruits. So I'm, I'm very simple cook i'm very good cook but i like the real flavor so that's Mm. why i like a good vegetable with just the right amount of olive oil the right olive oil with the right salt it's going to be much better than if i try to put all the sauces so i don't do because since i did uh tcm traditional chinese medicine i learned about the energy of the foods my i changed my way of eating also when i stopped smoking i realized i had no connection to food so I needed mm. to have a curiosity and started going to the farmer's market and, and questioning where the food came from. And, and so food is a big thing for me, but I'm not extreme. Like I'm not vegan, no vegan. I, I'm, no, yeah. I just want to make sure that it, I know where it comes from and it's wholesome. So mm. if they're eggs, they have to be like, I have to know that they're coming from a farm where the little chickens are roaming and stuff like that. But other than that, if I go to another country, and the only thing they have to eat and they're giving it to me comes from I will receive it. Exactly. You accept it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. like, you know, of course I love Korea town, but before, before being too like specific about where the food was coming from, I, I, I basically did residencies eating just Chinatown and Korea town mm. before oh, wow. my, my, my like, okay, maybe, maybe has too much sugar. Maybe they put too MSG, like, we don't even know what's here. And then I was like, I became very scrupulous about it. And then I was like, yeah, maybe no. So I would celebrate sometimes to go, but I'm no longer like, you won't see me Chinatown for, for decades now. I, I, I don't, I ah, just, yeah. I, even right now, my stomach is like, really, you're going to do that? I'm like, no, because it's like a bomb, but I, I enjoy food a lot, but I like like simple flavors. So when I go to Italy, I love Italy, Italian food because they really cook, like, you know, the herbs are fresh, mm, just yes. do two things like this. And then it becomes this like, wow, when it's too heavy, I just, mm, no. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I, I'm totally with that. And I saw, I believe I was in, on your Instagram. Uh, how about you went on a recent like uh, health journey and uh, you're looking great and <laughs> you're talking all about that. And like, I, I was like, like I was, I was in terrible shape. I used to be almost 300 pounds. Right. And then like, yeah. And I went all into, when you talk about like, like you picking about food, I was crazy. Like, and like you, I, I backed off a little bit. Cause again, it, it starts to become like orthorexic. It starts to become yes, like a yes, disorder. Yes, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. So. Same. I did the same because I realized, and this is what happened. It's like an anecdote, but it's true. A very dear friend of mine got uh, COVID at the very beginning. And he oh, was wow. in the hospital yeah. and I mean, we thought he died. He was one of the first people that they took there. The doctors had no idea how to deal with it. I still don't think that they do, but anyway, no offense, but that's mm. my point of view. <laughs> and um, and then he's a school he's a school friend. I hadn't seen him in a while, but then all the people that surround him and he's very much loved by a lot of people 
kind of approached me and they said, Monica, you're a meditator. You're doing all these things. Is there any way that you can teach us how to meditate? And I was like, look, I'm not going to teach you how to meditate, but I'm probably going to give you some exercises of how to breathe. So mm -hmm. if we connect every day, I mean, they, they decided to connect every day at 7 p.m. to send energy, healing energy. Mm -hmm. Some people were praying. Some people were just, and, and I just taught them in a couple of videos of how to breathe. Easy. I said, don't get too, don't get too much into the thing. Just be in the body. That's all. And when you're breathing, imagine him being okay, being happy, driving back, motorcycle, ba -ba 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 -ba, making you laugh. Like, just imagine. Don't, don't, don't go. Don't project the, the victim. Oh, he's gonna die. But project the joy. That's what you have. If you want to work with energy, that's the way. So yeah. okay. So we did it, and then we were all connecting, and all of a sudden, I'm there pretty much connected to all these people that I have kind of like left, not canceled, but I was not very active with, uh, with a group of people there. But then when he, he, he got out of the hospital, he was like a miracle. He, he had a heart attack. He was able to wow. be revived yeah. and everything. So I went to see him upstate, right? And it was early on and I'm on the train. People were like, are you crazy? And I was like, no, I'm not gonna get that thing. But anyway, I'll go, you know, mask, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I go see him and I realized that he and nobody needs my help that's it was a very beautiful moment that moment because i saw that he he's going to do well he already did well yes all the prayer or 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 energy or whatever it really helped him we think he doesn't agree he thinks that he was a doctor's <laughs> okay that's all right uh but there was something there that I, made me realize that day that and that's when i came with this thing that you know if you're a vessel and you're full you cannot, me, I cannot be the water that tries to fill in because there's no receptivity. So when I saw it, I, it gave me a lot of perspective of like, I got to really uh, be not careful, but I, I'm going to watch very much who really needs to have from my creative and who doesn't. And they, I had been reached out by a group of them to say, give us this information. I did. So I don't, I needed, I didn't need to stay there anymore because it was done. Not because I'm not saying that we saved him. No, but I think that that contributed a lot. Again, he doesn't mm. agree. Point of view. It's totally okay. But in me, what he made me realize it was there was a picture that it was taken when I was there, and I look at myself and I said, "Oh my God, what happened?" I was, I had, I think I had gained like 20 pounds for just drinking a lot of alcohol during the pandemic because mm. I went. Oh wow! Like, yeah. Oh, I mean, I was on Zoom every day. I was like. <laughs> Albert, do you think you can have like, we can have a drink, you know, and I'm, oh my God. so, and, and then going to Marlon, like bread, I was not paying attention. So I remember I seen the picture of me and I was like, who's that? And then I said, oh, yo, yo, yo. here I am coming all the way from Manhattan, risky. I'm not risking because I don't believe, but I still like daring to come take a train <clears throat> to take care of this person or to see if it's okay. And I'm not even taking care of my own food. Mm. That was a moment that I go, so I heard a friend that she had been doing this uh, health program. It's very easy. It's just like you eat, you eat every two hours and a half. So you, you really move your metabolism. You drink oh. a lot of water and you eat very specific uh, portions and stuff. So it's just becoming mindful about your intake and what you're putting. So that's what I did. And I dropped, I don't know, 25 pounds. And so. Oh, wow, congratulations. You look fantastic. Thank you. I mean, definitely working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, and I just wanted to feel, and, and the motivation there was like, I want to feel as good as I look, and I want to look as great as I feel. Yeah, that, that was that's my motivation. Yes, I, be, I don't want to be, and no judgment here. I don't want to be one person who talks about health and about like, you know, integrating. And I don't, I don't look good, not mm -hmm. not because of physical, but you have to emanate what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. If you cannot apply it, you know, and we all have um, different challenges. So I am into like, I like to invite the challenges to tell me where to go. I'm like, okay, uh, now, yeah. uh, what's your name? Oh, you fear? <laughs> you look like anger to me. You know, like I make fun and I, and I deal with it. So I'm, I'm right now going very deep into my codependency mm -hmm. um, addictions. I'm very addicted to, um, Okay, so I'm coming out. Um, I, I like to feel needed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, that's not, you're not alone in that, okay, yeah. I love to feel needed. Um, 
I love to be, and when I was little, and I'm just going to confess with the open, it's like I used to mm. sit down and daydream of a day when everybody's, oh, Monica, she's so great. She's so great. She, that was me growing up, like thinking she's like, and that was about validation. So right. I was thinking like I would do, I will, I will trade my own sense of security just for that moment of somebody going. So what happened was mm. I attracted all the narcissists. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I was like, oh. Magnet, <laughs> all the people that I was like, oh, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. And then halfway through, I'm like, ah, oh, because I had given my power. Exactly, to. yes. So what I've been learning right now is the language where I go like, oh, I would love to do that. Booked. Mm, oh, yes. that's a great idea. I charge this per hour. Uh, ah, da, 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 da. so i i learned how to like listen to who really needs it and who's there ready to be like clinging mm. it's 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 a deep deep one because this has been embedded in me since my father died so it's a, I see. It's a okay. personality that i picked up very easily and i am starting to differentiate that i am not that mm. And how to get not out of it, but how to make good use of it. Because if there's one beautiful quality that I have, it's my way of being generous. Mm. So the, that goes to the group. Yeah. The group came because in a dream said, after, the group was open immediately after that self-awareness of I'm giving, I'm giving energy to cups that are not ready. Mm, yeah. And I said, but I want to share. I remember I said, but I want to share. And the voice said, yes, you can share, but you don't have to know who's receiving. Wouldn't that make a difference? And I said, I don't need to have the like. I don't need to. Mm, yes, yes, I see. And then I belong to many groups. And I also saw that there was always a lot of uh, strain in the people that run the groups in the uh, with their some trolls always that come mm. and just poop. <laughs> And then there's there's a lot of stress from the people running groups trying to control the situation. So I thought, I'm just going to go one step further. I'm not going to allow. Private, right? Yeah, OK. Private. And if yeah. you want to post, yes, you're invited. But I have to revise what you're going to post. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the reason, that was a way that I, I made a safe place for me and for others. So it's about information. It's not about me, although I put stuff that is coming through me. But it's about the information that I'm interested in um, that is leading to my evolution. And I know that if I keep it by myself, I'm going to be a little bit nervous about not being able to share because that's the degenerate part that I have. Mm. So if I, make a, if I make a group where I have some themes and I put them there, you and all the people that belong can decide whether they click on it or not. And that's not my business exactly and yeah if you like it or not that's not my business so i'm not here as a dogmatic persona saying you should do this and you should, because I'm, that's not my business that's not my mm. business my business is this is also like a personal diary of putting stuff there and also it's, it's a nice way for me to observe where i am at this moment ah uh, yeah what like what stage you're at i see what you're saying yeah okay yeah, yeah. And so but because uh, i mean if i had started doing this like some years ago you could see it so right now sometimes i go oh this oh that because i want to give some context so that's why sometimes i tell a story because it's to give a context that i'm not just like going online and googling what's the most googleable theme of the day no it's just like something reminds me oh this i'm listening to this music or i'm listening to the store and i listen to i actually have not finished the uber boy like i love uber boy <laughs> he's really good he's really good yeah i just love his humor i like things that they have humor and and i love people that have that ability to be so to know themselves and to be even mm -hmm. to, to have humor about it that's also why i love russell brand <sighs> ah yeah russell brand his podcast is good yeah oh my god he's like and i've seen him in all the stages when he was exactly yeah I mean, for me, he's a person that really shows that self-inquiry really works. Mm. Because you can see the beauty of it. He had it in himself, always, that mm. spark. 
but boy, he was making so much trouble because I can see myself there. I, if, you, if you had known me in high school. If you had known me in high school, oh my God, I, I, I was, oh my God, legal troubles out there. Ooh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but now it's like I have that Monica, the Monica's are going like, but we were not that bad. I said, yeah, but we were, but no, no, no. And then it's like the other Monica's go like, wow, but we have really transformed. So mm. I, I can see the humanity on, on every stage and, and I can see where people come from. And one thing that is very important for me, I don't idolize anymore. I mm. want to see the humanity. One thing that I keep in mind every day right now that I enter the new group, the moment I see that people are behaving that this is a cult, I will. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I immediately do that because I cannot idolize anybody in the group. Mm. And for, as of now, I see that it's, and I like their openness because they, they are very participatory. But the moment I feel, and it's usually not the people uh, that are on the top that create that sense. It's yes. the people that make the idols. Mm. Mm. So yeah. I'm very much aware of really, not that I'm going to cancel anybody, but I'm like, you know, it's, it's a new place I'm observing. I have no idea mm. really what it was for. I, I have a sense of what it will be, but not really. That's why in my bio, I was less about my achievements. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. I'm not yeah. this, that, I'm, you know, just, I was trying more to define myself with like some phrases that are important for me. Like one of them that is very vivid is like the only revolution is to be oneself. Yeah. Right yeah. now, because I think that if I liberate myself, and I, I confront my traumas, my shadow, and I individuate. So that, that means that I transcend them. I can actually uh, be a rebel because I'm, I'm re rebelling from my conditioning. Yeah. And, uh, and then I can be of service because I can be myself. So it's all there. And it's very, very, and we are the architects of time means that this was very beautiful, this dream. It was uh, a dream that has a lot to do with the project that I wanted to do. Like, like find my, my Sangha, my, mm, yeah. my tribe, but it's not one. It's just like floating in many different levels. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So the dream said, like, go keep on doing what you're doing and you will find all the other architects of time. But that means that we're all, mm. we're all building our reality. Yes, so yes. it's like you will find who is in the same wavelength constructing a new community mm -hmm. so that's why it's called we are the art because we are we but obviously i created that as a vessel for me to develop those ideals and then eventually you know connect them to others um mm -hmm. but it's more like my group is more like a i'm speaking out loud yeah i noticed yeah I'm speaking out loud. Some people like, can I post? Yeah, you can do. I only had to, there was one, two confrontations really bad that they came um, um, super personal on, on the messenger of somebody that it was invited by somebody else. And this person was just being very provocative in a way that it was not productive. Hmm. And I had to say, I'm sorry, I have to let you go because uh, this is not where I want to engage my energy. I can't have discussions like this. It's not about right and wrong. I don't care if you're right or if mm. I'm wrong or vice versa. It's not about that. And you're missing the point. And he kept on pushing, pushing, pushing. And I said, you just pushed the last one. And he goes, what? And I said, blocked. You know, that's <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. And then the friend that friend me, like unfriend me because she fit. Oh my God. <laughs> because at yeah. one point it's like, I can't be in control. Mm. but I can decide and that's where I'm learning to differentiate right now it's not that I want to be in control of my life but I I do want to set up the boundaries that I never have because the, I am very open being mm. all the things that are out there but I do have to say hey I'm sorry you're stepping on my little toe you can't stand that close mm. Yeah, so now I know why I we resonated so much because I feel like you're just mirroring like this, like the like a very similar stage that I'm at. Um, and like when you talk about how like we're idolizing people and we got we got to move away from idolizing to being sovereign, and like that's like that's like that's kind of like what I'm doing right now. Like for example, I got into Rebel Wisdom and all this because of Daniel Schmachtenberger. And you don't understand when I first got into this, I was like, oh my god, Daniel Schmachtenberger, he's gonna be at Sense Making 101. I want to talk to him, and I was like, I was idolizing him, and I was like. And over time, like 
sense maker one, they actually, you know, they're, they're actually helping you become more sovereign. And they, 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 you know, they teach you one of the teachings is that you can't have genuine connection unless you have two, you know, sovereign individuals. Otherwise you're just merging, right? you like, you know, like you gotta, you gotta have that boundary and then you gotta have like the, the, the groundness, the wholeness in order to connect, you know, cause otherwise it's just like, you just, they're the codependency like you were talking about. Right. And, um, and I mean like, yeah. And like, and then, and, and, uh, that's a big thing with what I'm doing with, uh, noetic nomads. Cause I was like, you know, before it was just like, Oh, I'm doing it because I want that validation. Oh, how many followers am I gonna like? How many views am I gonna like? And that's that's always still a part of it. And, and but it's I'm also growing out of that. I'm like, no, it's not about this. It's not about numbers. It's not about metrics. It's not about me. It's about it's about my gift. And to me, it's about if anything, it's about you. It's about everyone else. It's about everything. Like it's about like it's not one thing. It's everything. And then. <laughs> When I do that, I'm like, wow, I'm just, then I could just freely give and be generous. And like you said, I could be revolutionary. I could be myself, you know? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, so thank you so much. I mean, like it's for basically being who, who and what I want to see in the world. That is amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And this morning, <laughs> I just, because I'm like not absent-minded, but I don't pay attention until I just realized that rebel wisdom, I just saw the rebel and wisdom oh you ah uh, yes yes because i always saw it as a as a, as a like a full name and I, what it was resonating more, more was the wisdom but not like it's a wisdom that it's unique mm. to itself and it's has its own sovereignty and yes. individuation and be, I, I was i was like oh of course you know i've been saying you know the only revolution is to be oneself. You know, it's like trying to see how I'm using my words because I am very concerned about the expression of the words and the energy, as I said before. I'm doing, mm. I was doing, I was correcting a text yesterday that is going to come out for the University of Texas. And I was talking to the copy editor and, and they had changed some words and they were saying to me, but um, it will be better to use because of the policy of the university to use eighth grade language. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Why can't we teach eighth grade people new words? Mm, you know, exactly. one of my favorite, favorite things to do is to just look up words, etymology. That's, I can spend hours just going to the source of, of the origin. Also, because I speak seven languages and one of them is Greek it's the origin of a lot of like the concepts comes from Greek mm -hmm. or in Chinese, a lot of the, like the forms, they have a meaning that is very much related. You know, the form is related to the meaning and in Greek, the meaning is related to the form. And mm -hmm. I love that because then we connect it immediately to the root of it, to the root of it. Yeah. But again, because everything else is lost in translation. So when I was little, I wanted to understand so much the world that I thought, if I speak all the languages, I'm going to be able. And then I was like, well, but that's not really happening because I speak the languages. I still cannot communicate. So yeah. it, it had to be a different kind of um, communication. So then I got really connected to uh, the symbology and the archetypes. That's why I knew about Carl Jung for a long time, because I was very connected to to cosmology and and before astrology, I was very much connected to the constellations. I love the forms. It's mm. abstraction. I just love it. So it was it, it was how to decipher it. My word, my my I want to decipher what I'm doing here. And it's almost decoding. Mm. What does it mean? I love Korean language because it has all these codes. Just and when I somebody told me the story of it, I was like, wow, beautiful. Oh, like the uh, the alphabet, uh, like King Sejong with all the Hangul, yeah. And with the lattices and everything, because yeah. I do a lot of the work. I mean, that's why I like the background that you, because it has these forms that have, um, uh, you know, they're very geometrical, and but they they mean something if you if you connect those lines. Mm -hmm. They're referring to something in an abstract way that already exists. So that's that. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we have Yeah, I was wondering, like, uh, do you, uh, do you, are you short on time or? Just want I'm to make good, sure. I'm good for another, I don't know oh, if it's too long, but let me see. Just I'll tell you right now. I have right. I have 15 more minutes. All right, 15 more minutes. All right. So let me let all right. So let me land this plane. Okay. Um, you have again like amazing perspectives. I mean, again, like 
and you talk about how like there is no there is no duality between artists and non-artists because like I'm just a I don't know I worked in tech but then like I see you reflecting everything that I'm feeling and so I mean I wanted to talk about about how like uh, I was reading your interview with uh, Terremoto Magazine and then um, you're speaking about how you believe that artists have given the intermediary too many uh, too much power and like um you give the example for art market and the, the people who make the money there are the owners in the land and the organizers and artists are the last ones on the food chain and then i believe that you can tell a lot about the state of society by two things which i think are correlated one is how it treats its least fortunate and the status it gives its artists and then how disconnected i was walking uh like you know like i would be walking down the street in williamsburg and i'd be like oh someone's uh putting up some street art oh my god well what sort of amazing thing are they putting up and look and it's a cheetos advertisement right and i'm like oh no it's like you know it's like and this is like this co-op thing of street art and like i just wanted to know i mean you've given so much and i i, I, I really appreciate this how do you feel about the status that society currently gives artists and where do you see this heading or where would you like to see this heading in the future? Okay, so I'm going to start from saying that society is not an entity other than ourselves. Mm, so okay. society doesn't give status. We give status. We give the power to the status. Mm. We individuals think that if we have status, we're going to have recognition. And we confuse three things. We confuse value with validation and with recognition. Mm. They're very different, the three of them. I see. I value what you're doing, so I'm going to give you time. Mm. By valuing what I, the time I give you, I'm validating your effort. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. If this is happening a lot, and other people are going to value and validate your space, you're going to be recognized. Mm. Value, validation, recognition. Okay. Say. It has a, it has a whole relationship in astrology. I speak many of the archetypes are, they have a meaning in that sense, but I'm speaking like to every day, every every person. So the interesting thing is this: when and one of the most important things about my design in in, in astrology and human design is that I'm here to serve as an individual, as an artist. But the main core of my design is value. Mm. So I'm here um, pretty much when I connect to people, I, I am validating them. I'm validating you because I am, I understand your value. This is my main core. Mm. But this is the interesting thing. For a while, I thought I had to compete with you and everybody because there's only one piece of bread. Ah, yes, I see. <laughs> this is yeah. what the Patrick is making is people to compete to do the best so i have to step all over you and not acknowledge you and not validate you nor recognize you nor value you because you have my piece of bread now in the new kind of a group b or whatever society it's not about hierarchy it's about synergy so we can go to book mr fuller and and the idea of like how geometry does work. ah book was fuller yes yeah the geometry of it is synergy is like if I am doing my own thing, if my consciousness and my awareness is doing its own shit and yours too and his and hers and ours, we're all going to be functioning together. But if I am only looking at where you're eating and you are taking from her dish or his opportunities, that's where we are right now as mm. a society. We have created that. We have given value to that recognition is more important. You know, there are two things that people think that are very, that are power. And I think I wrote about it the other day on face on, on Instagram says people confuse power and wealth. Uh, sorry. People confuse wealth and recognition with power. That's mm. not power. Power uh -huh. is self liberating. When you liberate yourself, when you tap into your own shadow and you understand what are the things you're afraid of, and you bring them to the light and you embrace them and integrate, then you're empowered. Then you give value to who you are. You value yourself, you accept yourself, you integrate yourself, you bring mm. all the persons that you are, your fears, your, your dreams, everything. And then by doing that, you're validating yourself. And when you validate yourself, you're being of service. And when you're of service, the phone rings. Hey, 
I have two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I want you to do this. Mm. Then you can get recognized. But when you work the other way around, that everything that you do is to get the attention for the wealth mm. and the and the recognition. You're missing it because when you arrive to that place, because probably you do, because people are so like like. If you are very ambitious, you could arrive to the point you arrive there and you go, but this is not what I wanted. How come people are not really seeing me? I'm a slave of the system. And this is what's really coming down right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody in its own cells, we already know that the system is not working. Why? Because we were confined to our houses by force. And we realized we didn't, we don't need to go to the office. Hmm. We realize we don't need that bullshit. We realize yeah. it. And so you go away. So we can still be human. We can still, and actually we're showing up in our pajamas and talking about how vulnerable we feel. We actually can make a better society. Hmm. So we're going to bypass recognition and wealth as the primary thing. I'm not saying that we have to be poor and not recognized because that's not what I'm saying, but that cannot be the source of the direction yeah that happens if you're doing what you like the most mm. and in your if you value okay so when you value something it has a lot to do with self-esteem and that self-esteem can bring you wealth mm. because it's the same realm you're valuing your work um hey albert i want you to do this for me and you say, I would love to do three hundred dollars an hour. Oh, I only have one eighty uh, an hour. Okay, let's do two two twenty five. We start negotiating. You have mm -hmm. leverage because you value yourself. Mm -hmm. And I will value you if I recognize that I need at this moment because the the way to work and to pay things is money. That's what it is. In the future, probably we can build a better way of communicating those values. As of now, it's not that, oh, fuck money. No, we need money. But not, you know, so you, you become a better negotiator. Like, for instance, with my landlord, I was, you know, I stopped paying rent in, in, in Brooking. And I, call, I have a very good relationship with my landlord. He's a Hasidic Jew, by the way. Mm. And I said, what are we going to do? And he goes, what are we going to do? And I said, yes, what are we going to do? Because <laughs> this is a we problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I never called him and said, I'm not going to pay you. I said, what are we going to do? And he goes, what can you do? And I said, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to pay this, but I'm going to stop paying that because I want to know what's going to happen. And I can't give you all the money I have on my bank account. He goes, fair enough. So I was paying him a little bit. Then the, I said, I'm going to leave, but I owe you money. And he says, uh -huh. can I go and sit down and we we'll talk? He goes, yes. I said, I got some money from unemployment. I got this amount, but I need this to move. I can give you this. And then I read that I can ask some money to the government for you. So I, I did that. I did all that. And then we came up to a number. Um, and I left. He wrote me a very beautiful letter to my new landlord. Da, 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 da. And I asked him, he has many buildings. I said, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. How many people ran out of your building without paying? How many people negotiated with you? And how many people asked the government for money? And he said, only two in your one. So you have uh, to know that you have, if you want to be respected, you always have to respect whoever you're dealing with. Treat them as you want to be treated. Even if it's above you, because, oh yeah, because a lot, I know I have a lot of friends that said, oh, but they're rich, they should give me. This is a, this is a victim mentality. There's mm. no power. I have no power when I say he's richer, I shouldn't pay. I'm giving him the power. But if I say, hey, tough, I don't have money here and there, you know, and the moment I opened those things, money started for, I don't know how to explain to you, Albert, like whenever mm. I do this, money just happens to me. Mm. It just, I'm a funnel of creativity because I'm open. If, you know, I have projects that I cannot really speak out loud right now, but they have been given to me because I speak my truth. And I also tell people, no, I'm not going to do this because of this and this and that. And then things get, you know, flowing. It's just like flowing, flowing, flowing. So I think it's very important that we understand that the power is inside of the 200. 
and power is not wealth nor recognition. That's something we created as a society because we are the government. We are society. Yes. We are the art world. We are the tech world. We, we, we created it. Mm. Each one of us. And as much as we created that, we're co-creating a new world. Exactly. So yes, the question yes. is like, what do you want to be? And how do you see yourself in a year, in two years, even in six months? Like, how do you see yourself? And that's why I kind of like manifested Miami Beach because during the pandemic, I was really visualizing a lot like, I want to be in a community. I want to do this. I want to, I don't want to pay this amount of rent. I love programming. I was there for 26 years, but I thought the rat race is not happening anymore. And the money that I'm going to make as much as I love my landlord, I'm not going to keep on paying just all the money. I was just funneling all the money to him. Mm. And, but I had acquired some responsibilities. So I am accountable for the money I owe him. And I made a deal with them. Mm. And I think that everything is negotiable, everything, if you come from the same perspective that you're talking to another human being that might be having same problems as you are mm. at a different scale. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh my God. I mean, this has been an amazing conversation. We're scheduled for like 90 minutes for like two and a half hours. I'm sorry. I don't want you to be late. So, so let's close it off with this. I mean, you've said so much. I mean, your perspectives, I feel, are so important. And I'm glad that my intu intuitions were right. I mean, you bring an incredible message that, and again, you, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, you're, one of your messages to connect, communicate, and inspire. And like, I would just like to know who or what inspires you? In the end, what is the one inspiration that you would like the audience to take away from this? I will have to say just one word is to be authentic. It, it has so many layers to be authentic is um, when you're doing something that gives you joy, you're being authentic. Mm, when you are not judging the universe, not, neither yourself, you're being authentic. Mm. When you allow your deepest fears to come out and feel vulnerable, you're being authentic. So for me, the only way, this is the only way is to be authentic. And it's not that just when you wake up and you become authentic, you got to work. You got to yeah, yeah. sit with your feelings, sit with your body, like reconnect, just reconnect. And if you don't know, ask. That's the only thing I've learned also. I have, I don't know everything. Although sometimes when I was little, I was very arrogant. I have changed that a lot. When I don't know, I ask. When I don't know, I study. And the more I study, and this is where the Spencer really like put me down, like to understand really epigenetics and then Bruce Lipton and you mm, know what yeah. is like, if I have done it all my life, but now I know how it works. So if I don't know, I go to inquiry and I'm opening up a realm where new information is going to be created. And then if I practice this new information, I start reshaping myself and that's when you have transformation because mm. you apply it yeah so there's no good about having tons of books oh i have that book but i haven't had time who cares you have it it's not about having it's about applying mm. so the practice makes the master uh, i got it oh my god Manga Bravo, you heard it here. Be authentic, be yourself, give your gift to the world, connect, communicate, and inspire. Amazing. Thank you so much again for coming on, being one of the first guests in Noetic Nomads. Uh, where can people find out more about you? Link social media or anything like that? Oh, well, I am, and I do a lot of Instagram. I'm like super Instagrammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I noticed, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, uh, and, the, and this, I'm gonna, I have a lot of people like asking me to be an influencer. Oh, so oh no, I, that's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but then this, I made a post a while ago that, you know, the difference between being an influencer and inspiring, you know what the difference is? What is this? I forgot. I read it, but I forgot. <laughs> okay. Influence is something that happens to you. And it comes from like uh, middle ages where people thought, and I mean, it's true that the energies of the planets have something on top of it. Like it's their influence. Uh, so you have no yeah. power. You have no power when you're an influence. Mm, yes. But to be inspiring people, you're connected to your spirit. Yes. In spirit. One with spirit. Beautiful. Inspiring. 
So I want to inspire you to be yourself so you can inspire <laughs> other people. That's it. Oh I am God. not influencing oh anybody. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Really? So Monikako, at the, at the, what we can put it, Monikako, mm -hmm. I have the group in Facebook that everybody's invited. Um, awesome, awesome. We are there because of time. There's a lot of like thought there. My monikabravo.com is where my work, I'm, I'm actually going to change it because it's so, it's outdated because I want to integrate it with Studio Fender's ideas. Oh, okay, awesome. So I, I'm in the process of right now, okay, ah, everything together. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I can be reached uh, anywhere. Okay, got it. All right, I'm gonna put all this in the show notes, and you could check out her episode page on noeticnomads.org to get all the goodies. That's it for another episode of Noetic Nomads. Thank you so much, Monica Bravo, again for coming on. You are amazing. I hope to hear more from you soon. And again, everyone, get in touch with her because she's amazing and she's gonna inspire you. And uh, peace out, everyone. And step up, nomads, because the world needs you. Okay, bye. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. All right. Also, and we are done.